Yo, people, welcome back to another episode. Oh, I keep saying another, it's a daily episode. Okay. We're another doing this shit daily. Yeah, yeah, it's another one. It's a, it's a daily episode of World Cup Carnage. Another day of pretty much carnage. I don't even know where to start. There was hella things going on. The morning games. It's so mad, isn't it? Because we were talking about how... The, <laughs> I was telling Zaberi, allow the morning games. The morning games are always the dead games. Go to sleep. Don't wake up. Do what you're doing. Catch your sleep in the morning games. And lo and behold, we have some madness to talk about in the morning games. But people, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever the case may be. You're tuned in to your one and only World Cup <laughs> Daily Carnage. So you guys already know what to do. Let me see if anyone in the mods has told you what to do. Yeah, people always know. The mods in the chat know what they're saying. Smash a like, people. Smash a like. Indian Scouser is in the building. He's not happy. He's not happy. He wants to know. Darwin, we're going to talk. Let me talk. Let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk. Let me talk. Um, yeah, Bilal, man. Get that criminal man. Bilal's the Bilal, Bilal's the Ooh. evil one in this man. Yeah, he's got the he always has the villains in the background. Mm -hmm. Last time, who did you have? Had Richarlison on. Don't yeah. answer me. Yeah, I've got all the enemies on. I don't care. I love it. I love it. Oh yeah. my god. I love the bad guy. As you come in, people keep smashing the like so we can get this transformed and transported and relayed to all the YouTube algorithms. Yeah, we'll be I'll be jumping on this big six afterwards. But first we need to talk. We need to talk, people. What's going on, Bilal? Talk to me. Did you watch the first game of the morning, which was not billed as a classic, but my God, it produced one of the greatest, well, definitely for in this World Cup, one of the best games of the tournament. Yeah, today was a day where I was so happy that I was pretty much at home the whole day. So I got to see it all. Woke up 10 o'clock, and I think that's the last 10 o'clock game, man. So... RIP 10 p 10 a.m. games. That's oh. a good way to go. That was a good way to go. Let's be honest, right? And it was, yeah, it was a fantastic game. Cameroon, Serbia, men fighting everything. I thought it would be like red cards. I just thought this game would be it was gonna be physical, crazy, and it literally lived up to it. The tactics, not really there, but it was just vibes. The whole game was vibes. And then when we'll get on to Abu Bakr after when he came on, <laughs> oh the nice. Mohammed Salah hater. Yeah, let's, all my Liverpool let's, fans here. Let's stop. I know you're burning. Stop Watch now. <laughs> Run it stop. This guy's oh, a criminal. God. Well, I don't oh, know. No. I want to. I want to call him. I want to call him all sorts. But sometimes you just gotta say, you know, that finish was cold. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, not been, it's not been. A, it's not been a good day if you're a Liverpool fan in terms of, in terms of players playing for us. We're gonna get onto a certain player that played today. And in general, people that have been baiting our players like this brother, you know what I mean? But did you watch the game? How was that first game for you as well? Because to me, that was wild. I did not, look, I did not expect Cameroon to turn up like that. I thought the game started off well, but Serbia took control. I don't know what happened there. Serbia, Serbia, it was just, it was just typical World Cup. We just saw momentum, how much momentum matters in World Cup football today. Well, any right. football, Momentum, yeah, in any yeah. football, yeah. Serbia get the two goals on the on the edge of uh, half time, and you're thinking, yeah, easy, easy. Now they're gonna walk stroll through the second half, get the third, whatever. Bro, fair play, man. I've got to hold my hands up. Abubakar, maybe a big club should go in for you because that finish. Well, how old is he now? He's old now. He's like 35. <laughs> that no, finish no, 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 no. I checked his age today. I saw he's 30 years old. And this, this whole guy's time, been around I swear for down, years. he's 35. I swear down, he's, he's been 30. around for I years. He's not playing like Saudi Arabia the other day. I'm confused. I thought this guy was like 35. I went to go check. I'm seeing 30 years old. It's like, no, no, no. This must be a lie. I need to double check his, his age. Someone yeah, yeah, is yeah, confirmed. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm confused. Look, he looks 40, bro. I'm telling yeah, you, yeah, yeah. We're not gonna, we're, one we're, of those we're, guys. Yeah, he looks we're the not same gonna get older, in, We're not gonna we're not gonna get into the to the <clears throat> the controversies around certain people's passports and whatnot. And you know what I mean? We're we're gonna we're gonna keep it basic and just say, look, he doesn't look 30. That's all we're gonna say. But uh, but Zuberi, man, did you expect that from Cameroon? Turn off mute, turn off mute. Grizz, listen, man. 
I'm not listening to you or no one. And I never really did. I always take what you guys said with a pinch of salt. Pinch of salt. Telling me, Yo, That's Zabiri, me. sleep away this game. I'm like, bro, this is football, bro. You can't predict this thing. You're going to tell me to sleep away this game. I was up. Matter of fact, I was up at 12 a.m. Game starts at 5. I'm going through all the routine. Buckled in, the game didn't disappoint. It's a good way to send off these 5 a.m. games, though. I'm not going to lie. I thought the game was done and dusted at halftime. I guess Cameroon just needed some water. They got mm -hmm. hydrated, brought the old gun on, and it was a wrap, man. It was a wrap. I love this game. You know, I, love I don't this even know game. where to start with this game. I mean, can we talk about how Trooper Motting is Loki, one of the best strikers in the world at the moment? Bro. Hey, oh, like, my. Let me tell you something. Live, I was like, yo. <laughs> then he's delivering everything. Go game. check his stats in the Bundesliga this season. It is mad. It is mm -hmm. mad. They don't miss Lewandowski. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. No, it is mad. Producing, I thought he was done. Now I want Origi to come back because this guy had been like the Origi over there for time, bro. He He's was the butt, he was the butt of a lot of jokes when he signed for Bayern Munich. Mm -hmm. Everyone was saying who, what, where, but bro, he's taken he's taken over from Lewandowski, and obviously no, he doesn't taken over from Lewandowski. But you know what I mean? He's replaced him like he's he's one of the key men at Bayern Munich now since Lewandowski's left. This guy, I, I looked at him today. I watched him closely today. And I wanted to see him because he impressed me in the other game as well, you know. Cameroon didn't impress me, but Chipper Mountain impressed me, right? I looked at him today and I was convinced, yeah, man, this guy's... I, I see what people are saying. I see what people are seeing about him. He's 33 years old. Who? Chipper Mountain. There's no way he's older. You cannot convince... You cannot pay me money mm. to say he's older than Obubakar. You cannot, you cannot. I prefer not to speak. speak. If I speak, I'll be in deep trouble. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. But look, we have to, we have to speak on Serbia as well, right? Because there's two teams that made a game. Always two teams mm. that make a game. Serbia shouldn't have let that slip, right? Yeah, no, hundred percent. Serbia. At the beginning of the game, obviously, they, they went 1-0 down. Castelletto, I believe that's how you say his name. They fell asleep in the corner kick. Castelletto comes in back post, scores. At that point, you're thinking, oh, how Serbia are going to really get back into this game? But that Pavlovic guy that we were talking about the other day saying, on the ball, disaster. Like, you give him the ball, like, he's a liability. But one thing he has is aerial, you know, prowess. Aggressive, I'm pretty sure yeah, what, yeah aggressive. aggressive. The header was great. And then, and then I think the celebration was. I'm pretty sure everyone was just like giving him licks, man. They were just punching him up. But that's because he's a big man and he scored that big he header. So like, it. yeah, he can take it. You know, it's like when I, it's, it's like when I, it's, it's like when I troll Omar. Mm -hmm. I know he can take it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I troll yeah. Omar on here with his. You, you don't, you don't see me off off screen when I cry myself to sleep. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> Cyberbullying, man. Yeah, cyber. Stop cyberbullying.com. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, then. Obviously, Milinkovic Savic comes up with a goal. And at that point, you're just thinking, wow, Serbia are going to be professional here. They're going to get the job done. They've got the players. They've got the know-how. They're just going to get this done. And it's football's a mad game because they've scored that third goal. And the third goal is a beautiful goal, if you saw it, Dmitrovic. Nice work goal. And is, everything's going well. Like At that point, you're thinking, easy day. But then, as I said, Vincent Abubakar comes on and absolutely changes the game. And... I just think it's just a World Cup. That second goal, was it? I know the VAR, like, if it wasn't for VAR, it would have been offside. The automated system, I think it's doing a good job. So, and that kind of goal there, you don't want it to be offside. The chip was beautiful. And I'm pretty sure one of the Serbian players tried a chip, like, a minute before that. I don't know if, if, I'm, if I'm bugging out. I think I think they did. And then Abu Bakr goes up and then chips the goalkeeper there. And then the third goal, same thing. Serbia fall asleep. And that's the thing with the Serbian free at the back they're all kind of slow guys you run in behind them you can really get them that's why against brazil they played so deep the brazil team struggled to really break through but in a game against cameroon they're going to be more open there's more space and then abu Bakr, cheap promoting free free and at that point you're just thinking what's going to happen next but ends free free in the end but yeah what a Mad, game what a game mental before. ash for, ash sends in the first super chat of the night always appreciated um thank you even though you're telling me off <laughs> <laughs> he says New Year's and Uruguay hype from Grizz and he does some sick faces. Bro, I'm feeling as sick as you, bro. Uruguay and uh, Argentina have let me down big time. My South American shouts are looking wild apart from apart from Brazil. My South American shouts are looking wild right now. But listen, 
it's a long way to go. Uh, Holmes, man, you got to speak on uh, you got to speak on this game as well. Like that finish was cold. I mean, you did not. I did not expect it from the big man. As they reckon, say. Do you reckon? Do you reckon he's done that because he felt like he was offside? I feel like that's something. Oh, you mean you think the pressure's off and you? Yeah, know yeah, yeah. Like... You're just like yeah, because you know when players are. Do you clean, reckon? That's a shout. Know, he, I think gonna... I looked at it. I think at the time when I was watching, if I remember correctly, I was like, he's taking a few weird touches running up to the goal. So when you take them few weird touches, he couldn't really get a proper clean strike on it. The only option really was probably to loop it over the goalkeeper, yeah. and he did it. So yeah, I think it's because of the touches prior. Like it was, a, it wasn't perfect. If it was perfect, he's gonna just do a simple finish, one on one. But to improvise in that situation and chip the goalkeeper, it's just class. And maybe he's right, man. If he had a bigger club, <laughs> right. you never know. Zuberi, maybe he's right. <laughs> has he got a point, Zuberi? Has this guy? Nah. Got a point? Has he got pedigree? Is that, does this nah. guy look like? Get him to Bayern. Get him to Bayern. Get him to let's see about Man United, man. Bring him to the Premier League. So, Man so United get, goes to Liverpool. Can one of let's you find it. his can one of you find his uh, profile of his career so far, please? Uh, while yeah. Zuberi talks upon him. Look, oh, so I know this guy. I usually get this guy. I want to say it was 2014 FIFA. Mm. I know this guy. I thought he was retired. Oh, oh I, th- okay. I thought he was like retired. I didn't I'm surprised he's still 30. Maybe he can do Porto you know, Day. That's when I remember him. Yeah, nah, he was it was cool, man. He was known for pace. So he was um running around being a menace. The guy the guy's never lacked quality. And as far as like the finish and all that good stuff, look, man, he put a lot of emphasis on that chip. I'm just gonna say he chipped that very aggressively. If you go watch that back, that wasn't no smooth tackers chip. That was a almost like a scoop. Yeah, that wasn't that was like a scoop. I'm a scoop. Yeah. I don't know how to describe that. I don't know how to describe it's that. It's a scoop. scoop. It's yeah, no, it's a scoop. Yeah, he, he scooped it up, man. It's not a chip. Yeah. That's not a chip. Yeah, it's not no, a chip. No, no, it went... That's not a chip. No, that's not it's a chip. ice cream. Chip is elegant. Wait, there, was, there was a guy at my school, yeah? He used to have these shoes that really pointed yeah. at the end. They used to point at the end, right? And he used to be able to do that. He used to, like, flick it up. And he used to, yeah, he used to lob the keeper like that. Bro, it's just mad doing that with normal football boots. Them it's shoes on crepes there. Them yeah. ones. Yeah. Growing up. <laughs> People want to know my take on Portugal. You know, when I said they will sneak through, let's say Portugal have turned up today. Uh, we'll talk about po- relax, Alex. Please relax. The, uh, the the night is young. We will talk on Portugal. Um, <laughs> j- yo, man, come on, man, allow this. You know, he has more Afcon pedigree than Mo Salah, to be honest. Come on, allow that, please. Allow that talk on this. Channel, He's man. got the chip. He's got the chip. No, he, wait, wait. I swear he does. I swear he's. Yeah, yeah, no, he didn't want Afcon. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. No, of course he, he has. But I'm saying allow it, innit? No, yeah. I, I, that's what I'm saying. Allow it. Innit? Don't, don't, don't do that. The ones, man. Okay, so okay, so playing... this is his league. He was playing at the age of seventeen, apparently, and he was in Liga after mm-hmm. one season in Cameroon. I assume that's in Cameroon. Most yep. likely, yeah, yeah. So he, after one season in Cameroon, he went to Liga. At the age of 18. And then did nothing there. Did all right at L'Oreal. I thought he scored more at Porto. I'm not going to lie. Mm. Yeah, the Porto fans that I've been seeing, they've been saying like he had loads of injuries. Like they said he had knee, his knees were finished at okay. Porto. I think that's why he ended up... Because he stayed there for quite a while. That's I remember in Porto cool. for ages. Mm. But I think, yeah, a lot of injuries just got up to him and stopped him. No, fair play to the guy, man. Listen, fair play to him, man. Enough of Abu Bakr, man. Enough. It was a wild game. Serbia, pretty much. Cameroon are not through anyway, so it didn't do him any good, right? Mm-hmm. Because they have to beat Brazil now. Yeah, yeah. No happening. Can we get that group up again of the porch of the Cameroon one so we know where we are? Serbia, oh. Serbia, uh, what does Serbia need? Serbia need uh, to play um, Switzerland. 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 Oh, shit. Shaka is not letting them win. Yeah, I'll tell Serbia you that versus Switzerland. Oh, sugar plum plum. <laughs> On the same oh, day, Serbia, uh, Switzerland, and Uruguay, Ghana. Oh, my Yo, Lord. Yo, I'm ill that day. What? <laughs> Leave me <laughs> alone. <laughs> we are going to war. We are going to war in the east of Europe, and we are going to war in the name of Luis Suarez. Get so, what do we know? We know Switzerland need a draw against Serbia. Serbia yeah. need, basically, Serbia need a win. And Switzerland a draw going into that last game. Thoughts, Omar, Zuberi, what are you saying about that? I think Serbia, I don't know if Zuberi you want to go, but I'm just, I'll, Zuberi, quick, I just think, I, I think Serbia have a chance. I think, like, if they turn up, 
a bit of passion, a bit of desire. They've got all that though. But Switzerland, no, but Switzerland, you have to remember, Switzerland last World Cup pretty much knocked them out because Shakiri scored in the last mm. minute against them. So they're gonna be I can I could see I could see Serbia winning this game, man. Uh but Zaberi, I don't know if you No, I think Switzerland is just all them out to a draw, you know. There's not really a lot of goal threat in Switzerland besides that Mbolo and who's mm. providing uh, the assist. So it's 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 a really techy one. It depends on how uh, hard Serbia goes for it. I don't think Serbia got the legs, man, for 90 minutes. They look like they lack intensity. You have to have intensity in this last match. Whoever brings the intensity in the final game in all the groups, I think will go through. But I think Switzerland will just play for a draw here, man. Play safe, not really go out. They, they don't need to, you know. So they, they should be all about containing um, defensively. They're not too bad. So... Yeah, I don't see why they be, they be going out there trying to prove a point or trying to go over the top. This game is on Serbia to come at attack. And then Bolo with pace and power can catch him on a counter, slap him up 1-0. Then Serbia is trying to fight back to get in it. So I can see it finishing on a draw, probably a late equalizer from Serbia at best. But that, that so would look, just turn the game up, you know, but it won't, it won't be enough to get him through. We weren't going to go into... Um the other game because the next game was the other african team smashing it today shall we go into the second game i guess yeah we need to man we need to get into it because we need to talk about our coaches because some of these world cup coaches should be sacked i know it's only been two game people allow me listen the the asian team japan south korea the coaches need to be sacked they're not doing the teams any justice out there gang ing lee why is this guy isn't starting this guy's just sitting on the bench watching World Cup hopes pass him by. Same thing with the Japan game. The the team lineup that these men are picking. I don't know what they're thinking about, man. Mm -hmm. The I'm Japan one needs the, the Japan one I'm backing you 100 percent The Japan one needs to look at himself. This, mm -hmm. this one as well. This one as well. Because I'm telling you, Gang Ying Lee, he's a creator, man. He, he he affects the game in a positive way. He's the one that can make something happen for him. And they just left him on the bench, brought him in the 57 minute, and all of a sudden you're seeing passion, you're seeing some decent crosses, deliveries, you've seen the intensity went up. But I think they didn't give themselves a fighting chance because if they had had him on earlier, they probably could have been two two nil up or something like that. Besides in chasing the game, and hey, credit to Ghana man, and credit to Kudos, but you know, Kudos to Kudos because he he did his thing. You know, I yeah, the thing. hype, the hype, yeah. the kid. The reputation, everything. It seemed like the whole hope, whole hopes. We were speaking to shout out to Quasi. Uh, I haven't seen him in the chat. If you guys have, um, oh, there he is. Oh, yeah, there he goes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bang on Q. Bang on. Bang on Q. Um, we were speaking about this kid, man, and we said he needs to play in a different formation. Now, uh, have you got that game up today, uh, Bilal? If you can find me the Ghana yeah. game and we can talk on it. Um, as, as as Marcelo says, they're going to be partying hard, bro. Partying <laughs> played well. Before we get on to that, do you guys yeah. want to talk about, um, what's his name? Onana, the goalkeeper, just briefly. Well, go on, let's bring up on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, look, we, we, we don't know. But the thing is, with these kind of situations, we don't know the ins and outs unless we've got a report, a reliable report that we can go by. Like, yeah, what happened? Us, what caused they it? They put a statement. They said, mm -hmm. uh, well, apparently there's an argument. So long story short, just to not to keep too long on this. They said uh, there's an argument between him and the manager. The manager wants him to be more reserved. You know, Onana, how he's a proper sweeper keeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to play. Yeah, he didn't want that nonsense like, in mm -hmm. his team. Onana took offence to that. Apparently, he got a bit heated. Then they've now sacked him or like he's suspended for disciplinary reasons. That's a long story short that's come up from the Cameroon um, FA. And yeah, he's not going to be playing for them right again this wow. tournament. And maybe for a long time, he stopped. See him. the thing is the thing is if you, and and then then that they concede that second goal which I thought Onana mm. would have saved night easily and I thought mm. to myself this decision is going to come back to haunt them. Well, you look but at it with Matip as what well. Do you, what do you do in this situation though, Holmes? What's going on? Like if a player, and without doubt he's one of their best players, man. The guy's a wonderful keeper, enigmatic, maybe erratic, but he believes in himself and confidence. Surely you've got to listen to the coach's tactics in this situation. If he doesn't want you to play ball, he doesn't want you to play ball. What do you do in these kind of situations, even though he's a star? I I think sometimes when you're a star in a country that isn't so full of stars, 
you you tend to see it a lot. They do tend like the big stars do tend to fall out with managers or boards that they're not really uh like they don't really get on with. Um I think like with Cameroon, you see it like I said, you see it you mat it. Matip hasn't played for Cameroon for how long? Six years now. He so, had a falling out yeah, as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So um clearly there might be something wrong behind the scenes. It's just a weird timing though, that you've come to the World Cup, you've played a game. So like during the World Cup, you make this decision. Like to me, that just makes zero sense. Like if you're he was if he's upset now, if he's that upset now, you'd mm. assume that he was upset before the World Cup. So, like, it's sort of like, uh, did the 1 0 against Switzerland really turn it over? It's just going to destabilize your team. To me, if I was him, I would probably just suck it up. Look, you're in the World Cup. How many chances are you going to get to play in the World Cup? Just buy into the tactics. You can have this discussion um, um, after, behind the scenes, whatever, and then go on. But you're in a World Cup. You're in the midst of a World <laughs> Cup. Your team has a chance. And Arguably, if you played, your team would have a, had a better chance. So, yeah, you should. Yeah. You can't be doing. You can't be doing that in the middle of a tournament, right, Zuberi? Yeah. You cannot be doing anything like that. No, you can't. You can't be doing it on any level, Grizz. Like, mm -hmm. um, like I see uh, someone in the chat saying this is something you learn at under sevens to listen to your coach. Mm -hmm. What example are you setting? Like, people are looking up to you. You're on the biggest stage. Even, even if this was an issue before the World Cup, like this is not something you do. I'm, I'll back any manager, any manager telling a big player, "Yo, sit down." And that's one of the things I feel like um, our manager was lacking at times, like just to tell, just to, to deflate some of these egos. You have to do it, man. Like he's the coach. I'm not saying he knows best, but what is better, your your ego or the team? It's a team sport. It's not one v one. It's eleven v eleven, and you're just one of the eleven. We can't allow you to be disrupting this because you feel like you know you're Edison and you wanted to dribble out to the halfway line and do the madness. Like this is the World Cup. You know you can do that at your club. Or you can build your own soccer team and do that over there. And um, as far as um, Samuel Etou, like these guys are, are big professionals, man, and, and they have to high, they have to hold each other to these high standards that they are playing at. You know, you're setting a bad example, man. I, I can't believe that's what happened. And if that's the case, man, yeah, man, I, I wouldn't even allow him to kick ball for the country again. Wow. Yeah. I mean, look, it, it puts the coach in an awkward, awkward position. There's no doubt he's an outstanding keeper. Um, the other keeper didn't look too tough, too tough. But he made a couple of saves still, didn't he, near the end? Um, so it's a tricky one because Serbia really, really piled on the pressure. Um, the Ghana game. Yeah, Bilal, if you can get the Ghana game up again. I mean, we need to speak on, on Kudos, man. Um, I mean, look, there's a couple of players I want to speak on. I don't know where you want to start, Bilal. Is there any in, any particular place that you want to want to start? With this uh, game? I, have to, I have to apologise to two guys. Okay. I've been, I've been calling them the Chuckle Brothers. Jordan are you Andre are you I'm sorry. Yeah. Like Andre are you still you are still got chuckleness in you but Jordan are you still got chuckleness yeah, in yeah, you. Yeah, he's got some chuckleness <laughs> in him but Jordan are you I'm going to big him up because even when I think about when I watch Palace because I watch Palace quite a bit there's a lot of times Jordan are you does quite a good good things like he drives with the ball his crosses his shots it's, it's okay you know but today the quality you know really show, showed like some of those deliveries the first goal the second goal in particular wow he turned up and yeah i just got to say sorry i got to say sorry man that's no at least yeah. I, I like humbleness i like humility because football's a humbler you're humble enough to say mm -hmm. you know what i mean you're sorry Ohms, have have you shown any have, have you got anything to say sorry to or anyone to say sorry to in particular or or did you um, kind of knew I'm kind of going to turn say... up? I'm very. I want to say sorry to to people that I want to say sorry to Ghana. I want to say sorry to Ghana and Kwasi in the building as well. I didn't think Ghana going to win today. Hands up, hundred percent. I didn't think they're going to win. I think South Korea. Um, I don't know if this their own doing. I don't know whose doing it is. Ghana played brilliant. South Korea were. Were, were atrocious selection wise and everything wise. So uh, you got to give it to the Ghana coach. His formation worked. My biggest, biggest thing was: is he going to change the formation? Is he going to play a system that suits, especially suits their star man for me, which I think is Mohamed Kudos. Um, and it, I think it worked. The formation worked to a treat arms. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably don't want to say sorry to anyone. Or maybe if I say sorry to one, I'll say sorry. Hyung Min Son, sorry, what yeah. was that? 
Your country yeah. needs you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Son, bro. Yeah. I swear, this guy had chances, but it just weren't Son alongside Kane. He didn't have that oomph. Like, man, what like... is it, man? What is it, man? All the big boys for their countries have stepped up and are stepping up. This guy didn't step up, man. It's the coach, yeah. man. It's the coach. I'm you gonna the coach gone, apology. Yeah, yeah I'm no. gonna send a sincere apology to South Korea, man. If anybody mm -hmm. from South Korea checking this out right now, I apologize. Mm -hmm. You gotta watch this, man. The coach let you down. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not apologizing to Quasi. That man got lucky. You see Naki Williams missing sitters in that. These men don't deserve to go through, man. They got lucky. They should be shaking the um I think he ended up getting a red card too, you know. Um, the coach. Mm -hmm. for, um for not getting some extra time. So yeah, he knew he was finished out here. So he just finished himself with that red card. Yeah, man. I'm not apologizing to Ghana. They got lucky, man. Missing sitters in that can't finish dinner. Kudos gotta come in and finish that up. I'm telling you, if Gang and Lee had started out early, these brothers would have been finished. So, Kwasi, luck, luck, luck took you guys there. Because Salisu, you see these men jumping over Ghana defense. Damn. We didn't watch the same game. Do we not watch the same game? They had a good spell in that second half where Korea just came out and were like, when Lee Kang Gin came in, that first cross, goal. Like, it was a mad whip. And this guy, number nine, Cho, only 24 years old, plays in Korea. Like, someone signed him because the desire he Get showed with those headers, mad, mad headers. Get oh, into Leicester. <laughs> Bundesliga <laughs> team or something. No, no, Wait, I love the way we're Bundesliga picking. Players, in the yeah. Bundesliga. I, I love the way we're picking random teams for these players. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think yes. of a little team. Little, little who was it yesterday? We were, who, who were we talking about yesterday <laughs> to Leeds and Forest? I, I just oh. every North American player we've been giving them to like Leeds and and uh, Leeds especially. Then I think Zub said, "Who was it?" Um, we don't rate some. You said someone I can't remember. Someone remind us. Like you named a player that we don't. Oh, Jonathan David. Jonathan, Jonathan David. David. I said he should go to Leeds. Yeah, yeah. Zub says he should go to Nottingham Forest. Nah, it's a Forest. He nah, got nah. Forest written all over him with Jay Ling's. In I him, said not, nah, 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 I said nah. I don't rate him. You took it to another level. Jesse bro. Marsh <laughs> needs to sign a few more Americans and become the Leeds and American manager. Jesse Marsh, mm. watch. Just turn Leeds into Team USA and they'll yeah, be they'll the biggest club the in time. America, man. They'll, they'll, they'll be the biggest Leeds. club. Not, be yeah. than Brixham. But listen, people want to hear about Mohamed Kudos, man. Uh, Mohamed Kudos, to me, strong as an ox. 22 years old. It says right wing, but he can play left wing. He can play right wing. And he showed against Liverpool in the Champions League. He can play through the middle. And he can play through the off. Um, through the off. The off the striker, yeah, through the offside, yeah, lovely stroke player, and that. But, but what I'm saying about this kid is, I think he's got the credentials, he's got the profile of being the perfect, I'm gonna say it right now, a perfect Jurgen Klopp attacker. This guy's got aggression in his game, this guy's got direction in his game, this guy has got confidence in his game. I like the confidence he's got. We heard his chat. We heard his chat right before the World Cup. He's backed it up. He's spitting. He was spitting. He was Bro, he's truth. backed it up. Who's got ankles? Him or Neymar right now? Let's just let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Who's better right now? Wait, I'm standing, I'm standing in solidarity with my no ankle. Oh, stop no that. Ankle brother. We're gonna get to that. Save that. Oh, save yeah. that. We're gonna get to that. Stop that. But now it's Mohammed Kudos' time, and we need to speak pun. Listen me. Listen me, this guy is cold. I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm not going over the top. I'm not basing it on today because today is two goals. You know what I mean? But this guy is it, man. He looks strong. What I love about him is so strong on the ball. He's only 22. He's gonna get better and stronger, and he's gonna play in a better team if he came to Liverpool. I tweeted in Definitely. the first game. I found out we had scouts at the game, and why? Because of this guy, Liverpool. And most importantly, Jurgen Klopp loves this guy. And from what we're hearing from, from, from very reliable people at Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp is having more and more influence on the targets and players he wants. So if man like Jurgen Klopp is a massive fan of this kid, then I think there's a very, very good chance we go for him. And today... Breaking news. I think it was at half time in the other game or something. The most reliable Dutch journalist. Because people don't listen when Gris says it. Gris said it last week. But when Gris says it, everyone just says, yeah, whatever. He just made it up. But today, 
the Paul Joyce of Dutch journalism has stated Liverpool have entered the race for Mohamed Kudos. Thoughts, Bilal, from a neutral party first. I'll pass the mic to you first. If Liverpool get hold of this kid, what are you telling me? Well, first of all, if Liverpool get him, I look at him like he's a really good player that can play in multiple positions, whether it's up front, whether it's from the right, whether it's from the left, or whether it's even in midfield. You know, that's something that you have to get. If you can sign a player at that age, at 22 years old, who's technical, left-footed, quick, smart, obviously played at Ajax for how many years where he's been brought up with that system where if you play for Ajax, you know football. Even if you don't make it to the highest levels, you understand football. And going from Ajax and then into Liverpool now, I think it would be a great move for him. I just think that football's mad. I was saying before the show, like a few months ago, this kid could have ended up at Everton. Like he could have ended up, he was trying to push his way through because Ajax, they weren't really playing him, they weren't really giving him chances. Give it a few months later, he's tearing it up for Ajax, he's tearing it up for Ghana. He's the first, I think, Ghanaian player to score two goals in a game for Ghana in the World Cup. He's got his country on his back and now this move like bubbling and yeah, the Dutch journalist that reported this is the most reliable Ajax source that you can think of. He's pretty much, whatever he says, he's getting it straight from the club, obviously. And he's said Liverpool are right there, of course, backing up what Grizz said. So yeah, 100%, this guy will be an amazing signer for Liverpool. And you guys, you guys saw him already in the Champions League. You know what he's about. And he just proved it time and time again. A lot of players just need chances. He wasn't getting a chance for a while. The moment he got a sniff, he's taking it, man. Before I come to Ohms, I want to get an... I have a feeling, an alternative view. So I'm going to come to Zaberi. Uh, talk yeah, listen, to me, man. bro. Mohamed Kudos listen, to Liverpool. I saw the guy against us. I saw the guy against us. And I'm like, hmm, something's there. But I'm like, you know how players get Grizz. They turn up against Liverpool. You know, they, they ain't really on nothing all year, all season. They play Liverpool 10 out of 10. And I'm like, I don't know. You know, Quasi came in and he's talking this smack. I see the coach play him out of position. I'm like, well, I don't really know. But I'm telling you, today I saw him and I'm like, you know what? If he's coming on and we're playing Real Madrid and we're down 2-0 down, well, I'm backing this guy, you know. This is what we need, Grizz, I'm telling you. A lot of that Curtis Jones stuff and all these potential men with potential. This guy... He's here right now. He's ready. There's no nothing about potential. He's ready. Ready to go. Real Madrid. Ooh, he can gun them down, you know. That's what I'm looking and that's what I'm thinking. This guy is ready, man. I like this guy. I don't know if right wing is his actual position. But we've been crying for a deputy for Mohamed Salah. And who else to put over there than kudos? If that's where you want to be, man, let's get this guy in there. This guy's ready to go. He already signed his resume. He already signed a CV against us. You know, anytime you play good against us, that's all we need. We don't need much else, you know. We don't. We didn't need the World Cup to go and get this guy. <laughs> I mean, I was on the fence, sure, but now the World Cup, man, I'm fully in. I am fully in, man. And he got legs and lungs for days, man. This guy does he get tired? I didn't even see him sweat, you know. I was looking that's at him. Like he wasn't him. sweating. That's wasn't what I sweating. Him. Yeah, that's why I like about him. I like people like that. You know, like Mohamed Salah got lungs for days. You know, like Sadio Mane used to have lungs for days. You know how Bobby Firmino, Jota, you see the trend. You see the trend. This guy will add to that. I'm a big fan. Ohms, um, what are you saying? Not much else to say, really. I think they both summed it up. Uh, I like what they both said, except for that Curtis Jones tray from Zaberry. I'm going to hold mm. you to that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to hold you to that. Uh, I see the slander, man. I see the slander. But, um, yeah, there's not really much else to say. Um like most Liverpool fans, the most I've seen him was against us and he performed and he's performing now. So if Klopp likes him, I like him. That's all That's all I've really got to say. Mm. And it's not only that. He Obviously, he impressed the likes of Virgil who's playing that day. You know, when when they, when they when a coach... When a player plays up against you, you know what you're dealing with. I personally don't think there's a better scout than the players that are playing against them. Obviously, more than once would help. But if you're playing against, like if us four are playing on a regular basis against each other, mm-hmm. up against each other, and we and we seeing each like training and we seeing each other sorry in real live match action, mm-hmm. and if coach asks yo what was Zuberi like, I'm gonna say Zuberi was a problem man. You know what I mean? He was fast. He was strong. You know, I tried to give him the this and I tried to do that, but he he, he held it, held it. Coach has to listen on it. Coach Wait, has to I listen. I got a that. question for you. Mm. Don't you think um, players in 
they should keep that thing internally. Because let's say his price tag was 25 mil and Verge come on like, oh man, this guy's a proper problem. That's, that's an extra five mil on his price tag, man. No, 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 but who too? What he's not gonna say to the public. If the coach, if the manager comes up to him quietly, yeah. yeah, yo. Oh, okay. What was that Zuberi like, man? We played him the other day. I'm thinking about him. Coach, mm-hmm. yeah, Zuberi was a problem. Or, coach, I'm not going to lie. I said a few things to him and he was shook. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's got the mentality. Whatever. I'm not saying it's the it's the standard or the tool that you use to judge or buy a player. I'm saying mm-hmm. I think it, would, it should be a significant tool or significant thing that you measure a player on because there's nothing like playing against someone, you know, for a couple of times. I'm not saying as a one-off. You know, two or three times. Definitely. You what do you think? Managers always ask. Managers always ask their players as well. Most of them ask their players, what do you think about this guy? Maybe I'm trying to sign him. A lot. I remember even my team, Arsenal, we signed Ben White. They were, Arteta was talking to Saka about him. Like, what do you think about Ben White? Da, 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 how is he? All of these sort of questions. And Saka's just a young kid, but he's asking him just to get a different feeling from a player's side. And sometimes you do need that when you're signing players. And now I think if Liverpool looks like, you know, if they go in for kudos, they will get him. Ajax are not going to be too difficult about it i'd imagine maybe i don't know january might be tough but in the summer yeah. we we yeah. know from martinez yeah. lisandro martinez we know they yeah, like yeah. to get their price so look yeah. i know we're in for him whether we actually go for him in terms of mm-hmm. willing to pay whatever i reckon we're talking 40 50 million pound you know if we if we go for him it's not a bad price if considering like if you get him for 40 40 50 million pounds at 22 years old and then you think about the other players that you have in your team right now your Elliots, your diaz jota nunez like it's a young team that's coming together for like a liverpool like kind of 2.0 so that would be interesting you need to sign a few more players like that maybe a midfielder hopefully you guys will get like a caicedo or something and then yeah we can see this new look team that's going to come into the future while we yeah. come into the next game, go on, Bill. Uh, sorry, go on, Oms. What was you going to say? I'll just, I'll, I'll just probably more direct to Grizz and Zuberi because it's Liverpool centric. Um, where would you see him slotting into this Liverpool team? Like, say we do stick with a four-three-three because he is playing around a bit. Like, is he in? Is he? Could you play him in the midfield? Do you want to play him? I'm, I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving up. I'm giving up on trying to work out where Klopp would uh, mold him into. How many times have we talked yeah. about molding players into mm-hmm. something they see different? He's got the attributes, I believe, into maybe possibly playing as an attacking eight. I, I definitely, as I said, a strength on the ball is one of his attributes. And if you've got strength on the ball in the Premier League and then you've got the pace and the technique like this kid has, then that's a very, very good starting point. That's myself. Otherwise, I don't know, man. I'm not sure, to be honest with you, right now, if I say, yeah, I can see him fitting in plan A or plan B or position A, plan B. But I definitely see him fitting into the overall fluid System that we can play four two three one. We can play four four two. We play four three three. I think he can fit into most systems that we play. That's my opinion on that. Yeah, I think club getting him now for the you know from let's say January to the end of the the season. Club will just use him as um, he sees fit. I don't think he'll have like a nailed on spot that he always rotate into. I think he'll just be a weapon that we we'll just use to unleash. Club will just be like, hey man. Whatever you did in the World Cup and against us, go do that from whatever, from wherever position. It can be left back, right back. I don't care. I think Papu just told him, like, yo, do whatever you want to do, kid. You got free reigns in this one. So that's how I see Klopp using him. Um, he's very versatile. And I think they might even push him towards, like, um, the left. We don't have a nailed on guy to just like come on and be very effective on the. We line. haven't got we haven't got a nailed on right. If Mohamed Salah decides to play through the <clears> middle <throat> like he has been playing through the middle ish. This guy is lethal from the right, I think. I think this could be a... Is he left-footed? He's left-footed. Yeah, man. yeah. Oh, That's yeah, no. Then it's, it's, then it's going to be on the right. It's going to be on the right. Um, and we'll just push Salah in the middle. Um, and, 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 and it, it depends one, on the game. It one depends spot. on the game. Well, Nunes, Jota and Diaz. Some... Like... No, man, I don't believe in this one spot business anymore. Yeah, no, no, I'm no, not it's not one spot. Yeah. Jata is down the middle too, you know. Like, Jata yeah, yeah, is yeah. yeah. Down, I'm not down about this with the five subs. We're, we're playing 50, 60 minute games. We're, we're, we're pulling out weapons when people are tired. We're pulling yeah, out, true. We're, we're, we're putting out, yeah, automatic, yeah, Kalashnikovs at minute 60. You're thinking, <laughs> whoa, they, they, they've shot their load. <laughs> Pause. Yeah, people are thinking, yeah, people are thinking they're done out here. People are thinking, yeah, they're tired. Everything's got, everything's finished. It's a wrap. They're looking tired. And we're pulling off Nunes and Diaz off the bench saying, come on. You see that, um, um, what's that meme, man? Oh, 
my mind's gone blank now. But you see that meme, he said, come on, man, join the party. And then you bring on Kudos and Nunes and Diaz for the last 30. It's a problem. Maybe I'm, look, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go and put in a bid first. Let's secure the kid first. And then we can talk about positions. But let's wrap this section up and go on to the next game, which was the Brazil game. Uh, this was hard work, you know, for Brazil, Switzerland, man. This wasn't easy, Bilal. Yeah, no, it wasn't an easy game at all. And this is why when we talk about Switzerland and Serbia later, I favour Switzerland in a lot of ways because they defensively, nice. mm. yeah, they're so used to playing like really low block and just being very hard to beat. You look at their goalkeepers' quality, they've got good defenders, their midfielders are strong. It's just the attack of Switzerland. There's not much of a threat. And apart from obviously Mbolo in terms of like pace and getting in behind, I think that's the issue with Switzerland. And that's why maybe there's not too many goals in their team. They're always going to be a really tough team to break down. And Brazil, for most parts of that game, man, it wasn't Jogo Benito. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't enjoying watching Brazil. And to be honest, when I saw Fred starting, already for me, I was like, ah, long day. Oh, long day. Fred, I wanted man. to see. Nah, I needed my Bruno Guimaraes, man. I needed him in there. I need. I actually wanted Rodrigo to play in this game. But obviously, if you're going to play, it's, you can't, at this point, you can't really maybe drop the Quetta. I don't know, but... I think Rodrigo and um, Jesus, when they came on, they showed like, oh, these guys, maybe they need to find a way to get them in more. I don't know why you're saying now, nah, man, because I'm back in Bilal in this one. I'm back in Bilal. I thought, that again, again, another coach got the selection totally wrong, in my opinion. Are you seriously, unless he's going for a, a draw or he's looking to just get through this game, are you seriously replacing probably the most creative influential player for his nation one of yeah in world football are you replacing him with fred could be could be strategic like you man that's what i'm saying long what I'm game saying. long game because here's the thing mm. and when i when i looked at the result and brazil scoring i think it was like the 83rd minute i'm like mm -hmm. nah credit to swiss man because i went to i did not watch this game i'm like yeah brazil slapping these men and they didn't really get slapped based on the scoreline. No, so I'm like, yo, credit to the Swiss, man. They held on. So that's why I'm backing them against that in that third game. Because if they can hold Brazil, which let's be honest, it wasn't really quite a, a proper attacking team. It was it was more as a, of a reserve kind of energy team. And Fred with the legs should do most of the work in there. Like I said, I didn't really watch the game, but I saw the lineup. And I'm like, nah, this is calm. For the second game against Swiss, this is a calm lineup, man. Don't knock this. You don't want to throw all your top energy burn these guys out too early they're in a good position so right now brazil man they they're coasting through so moving forward that's when you're going to see all the the big names and the flair and the the sauce that you guys like but for right now i think this was good man this was good tactically it worked out man so might have not been as entertaining but it's okay Holmes, what what zuber is saying is this is this is tactical from coaches. They're timing their players. They're giving them enough game time to keep it going, keep them fresh, not overusing them. Do you agree with that? Because they were never in any danger, I think. I mean, Switzerland had a couple of situations, but Brazil without Neymar looked half the team, especially with that three-man midfield as opposed to replacing an attacker with an attacker, like most people thought he's going to do. Yeah, it's, it's it, there's a few confusing things. It's like Tite at the start of the World Cup was like, it's not just about winning, it's, it's about winning with style, which is why he went with this super attacking team. Yeah, but right now, Brazil, to be fair, you look at that Brazil team, that 11 mm. there, mm. the Brazil we love, the Brazil that was flair, it was tricks and skills and attack, 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 whatever. Really, like, where's the flair? Vinicius Rafinha, that's it. Richarlison, fair enough, like bagsman, but not really got flair. Sort of waits for his opportunity. And then that midfield, it's like Neymar's a huge miss. Don't get me wrong, right? You you take out your best player. It's like taking out, I don't know, Grizz, what's your what's your favorite meal? My favorite meal? Wow. wow. It's like, we could be we could be all night, brother. Okay, don't ask me for, questions for, like that. For, 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 <laughs> For a British person, right, it's like taking out, I don't know, sausages from an English breakfast. Like, that's the part people want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you get my point? So, like, yeah, yeah. Neymar, Neymar in this team, like, he's that. He's it. He is him. Right? Whatever. My guy. Like, do you remember they did this before the semi-final against Germany and whatever? They're he, probably going to have to do it again. I don't think that ankle... 
Well, from the pictures I've seen, I don't know if he's going to be fit. They're saying he's going to be fit. I don't know. I, I doubt it. I think maybe he might hit the latter stages, but it depends how much like the swelling goes down. But I think this is a team that you might see in the like latter stages when it when it gets hard and you need a bit of an engine in midfield. Because I'm mm. still convinced if you go with Casemiro and Paqueta in like a pivot and you go Neymar, Richarlison, Vinicius, Rafinha, I still think that's far too attacking for like play that against France. I tell you, I tell you, what, I tell you, what, I tell you what, I tell you what it depends on. I think it will depend on if. If Danilo plays or Militao plays, I think if Militao plays, they play like with a three centre backs. Militao really tucks in, like dare I say it, like a Ben White, you know, makes it a back three, right? But obviously to a high level. And then you got Marquinhos and uh, Silva, and then you got Alexandro who plays further on. Then you can play that double pivot. I think that's more than enough. But if it's Danilo. And Sandro as the fullbacks, then yeah, then it's too much probably. So that's how I think just, it would work out. Just to add, Brazil actually do have a great defensive record. I think coming into this, uh, yeah, Cup, yeah, 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 yeah. like five goals or something like that. And mm. again, they keep, kept a clean sheet today. It's just about the energy in the team. And for me, I think we're at the stage now. Two games. I love Paqueta. I've seen. I love. I love him as a player. But I think we've seen enough to know that if Neymar's going to be out, I think for me, Bruno Guimarães has to start. Like after Casemiro, he's probably well right now. I prefer Bruno Guimaraes, but obviously with Casemiro, the two best midfielders that they have in that team, they need to play. But what were you saying though? But you want to play, so you want to keep Paqueta? No, so you no, want to no, keep Fred no, no, in no, the no. team? No, no, no. I'm saying Fred and Paqueta out, and I'm saying play Casemiro, Bruno Guimaraes. Rodrigo has to come in if Neymar's not in, in. Rodrigo yeah. has to come in, and if you want defensive work rate, but with flair, assists, everything. For me, Rafinha comes out, Jesus comes in through the right. Because you have for me, you have to keep Richarlison in the team just for his no, no, finishing and is his, his energy yeah, yeah. that he brings out front. Yeah. And and you go with that, Vinicius obviously just stays on the left wing. And if they go with a team like that, with that defence, I think that's the best defence. See, oh, when I can win the World when, Cup. When, 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 sorry, who said that? Was it that? Oh, I was just going to uh, yeah. do you want to, you go, you can go, you can go. Oh, no, I was going to say, when we were linked with Rafinha, early on in the season, at the start of the season or whatever, a lot of people talking about the attacker we should have got. Obviously, we ended up with Diaz. A lot of people speaking on Rafinha. And people didn't understand why I was had an agenda. I mean, I didn't. Any opinion that you give that the public, the masses don't like, is it's, it's deemed as an agenda. I just don't rate him as highly as others. I thought he lacks creativity. He's very direct. He's strong. He tracks back. He's got high running stats. All of that. He's got brilliant delivery, brilliant delivery, like set piece taker, free kicks, and you know, and, and general striking of the ball's clean. I just didn't see something in him that I, you know, I just didn't think he's creative enough. And he's showing that in this World Cup, that he's doing a lot of the running and he's doing a lot of legwork, but he ain't got that creativity. What's your thoughts on Rafinha so far, people? If this guy was from another country, uh I don't think who would care. I'm going to be very honest. Yeah, it's that Brazil shirt, isn't it? We're thinking, show me something. Listen, listen. Just the same way, if Fred wasn't from Brazil, or we'd be gassing him a lot higher. I think it's just the Brazil aspect to it. So Brazil would take away from a lot of guys um, good work and hard work because they're not the typical Brazil. But if this guy wasn't Brazilian, we wouldn't care about him, man. Like, even when we was linked with him, I'm like, what what is he going to do? Just... Mars is more effective. It's about being effective. And he's not consistent. Mars is more creative. Effective. Yeah, that means effective. He's doing something. What mm. is this guy doing? He's all I'm seeing is just energy. Okay. Mm. Fred does that. And, and he's Mahrez not like was he's different sticking. level. Mars like left from Leicester days when that when they won the league. And obviously going on now, he's I think Mars is put on weight and he's just a bit slower and everything's just coming a bit down. Wow. Yeah. But that well, few Mahrez years Mars was on job was so different, man. So good. You know what the problem with Rafinha is? I think the problem for Rafinha is that Barcelona move. I think that's really um hampered him this season because he's not really got a proper rhythm playing games. Obviously, Dembele's fully taken over that right wing spot. A lot of the times he's having to play. If he does play, sometimes he will get a few minutes on the right, but he's not really a mainstay in the team. When he was at Leeds, everything was going through him and the Leeds fans loved him. They said he's the best player they've seen for like, some of them said ever that I've heard them, some Leeds fans saying. And he's a good player. 
But it's just, I think, the rhythm that he's carried into the last few months has affected him going into this World Cup. The intensity, everything, yes, he has a good work rate, but it's just it's just missing. And he, I think sometimes when you have a big move like he had to Barcelona, the pressure that comes with it, the expectation, and then so far it's not like he's, he's been terrible, he's been good. But it's not yeah, yeah, been, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's not, not been, like it's, it's like Zuberi says when we see the Brazil shirt and a left footed winger, we're saying, Yo, show me something. Who are you? Are you Ronaldo? <laughs> are you Denilson? Are you, I don't know, name some other man. My mind's gone black. Zeroberto, you know, Bye which one are you? Now he's now, now he's got Anthony in the in the in the in the in the shadows. Anthony's a completely different type of player. He's all tricks and skills and flicks, whereas this guy is straight lines. He's yeah. a straight line runner. So oh. it could be a choice, like in terms of when you when the game opens up, because this guy will be lethal on the counter. But Brazil ain't got time to play counter attack football because no team's coming out against Brazil. This guy, why he's effective for Leeds? He's a hell of a player at Leeds. Why? Because every team, Leeds played on counter-attack like no one else. Bang! Within 10 seconds, they were up the other end. He's gone to Barcelona. He hasn't shown. Why? Because Barcelona are a counter-attacking team. Teams are, teams are camping against Barcelona. When he reps Brazil, teams are camping against Brazil. So yeah. I don't think he's got that game yet. But he might prove me wrong. Sorry, Oms. I think, I think maybe slightly in his defence... Like I couldn't, I couldn't really. I, I listened to this game, but I couldn't watch it. But it, especially from the first game, looking out, he he starts really deep for Brazil. It's almost like he's playing like in a right wing back position at times. Like I don't know if that's like a tactical shape, but like especially now with Militao being like a third centre back, he's having to come a bit deeper to get the ball. Maybe that's hampering his game. Because he's mm. not getting the ball close to goal. Vinicius is getting the ball so much closer to goal. And like a lot of Brazil's players so like left centric, especially when Neymar's in there, Richarlison, mm. these guys are like they, they naturally drift to that left hand side. So like all their creativity, Pacata's like sort of on that side as well. It's sort of there. And it feels like he might be a bit isolated down the other side and they're asking him to do a bit too much. I I feel like in his defense, maybe he's not getting the support. I I, I agree, like I still think he's a great player. I, I, I really like this guy. And I, I still think he can have an impact at the World Cup. Um, but I, I just feel like he needs more reps closer to the opposition goal. But um, um, I, I, but listen, before before yeah, you I'll, continue, I'm a jet because i got contractual obligations to fulfil. Mm-hmm. But people, keep supporting the guys, them. Smash up the likes. Make sure, make sure you look after them. Peace, love. I'll see you all in a bit. Take care. Take care. Right. Bless up, man. Bless up. Hey, Omar, I hear what you're saying, but it sounds like just excuse, man, because here's the thing. I think that was one of the reasons Salah was so effective because most of our attack was down the the left-hand side and Salah was just out there and that created some space for him in the opening um, moments of his Liverpool career until people was like, wait, no, we can't just be shifting left worrying about Mane and Robbo. we got to be watching this guy. So to me, I think that's to his benefit because – if, if all the, the attack is down the left, that means on the right-hand side, that's it. He's going to get a lot of space to do some things, and he's not doing much, bro. Services, his service isn't that great. Uh, name, name me two, like, he's not putting in decent crosses in or whipping anything dangerous in to cut back in to take a shot from deep. He's not really cutting back and, and licking nothing off at the edge of the box. So that to me, as a as an inverted winger, that's what you need to be doing. If you're not going down and doing some Cruyff chopping back the thing and and doing some layoffs so man can lick it in, okay, you're not gonna get any assists. If you're not cutting inside and slapping one top bins, like so th- like that's what he needs to be doing, man. He needs to be adding more to his game as far as like assist and goals. And I don't, I, I mean, and I think for Leeds he was doing that. I don't know if uh, Bilal said he went to Barcelona. I haven't watched Barcelona, man. I can care less about Barcelona or Brazil, maybe because it starts with B. I'm not interested in none of them, man, because they, they're about flair. And I think they give people like, yeah, bro, they they, they, they would not sign a guy like Hendo, you know? It's a letter B. There's no nah, because Barcelona would never sign a guy like Hendo. Come on. They would, you see what I'm saying? And I love guys like Hendo. They won't go for your Gerrards. And I love guys mm-hmm. I love guys like that, man. So to yeah. see Fred make it in there, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm rooting for Fred because Fred fits that mold. He shouldn't be in there, but he's in there. <laughs> so Fred at Liverpool might be interesting if you think about it. No, nah, I'm telling you, Fred at Liverpool will be dangerous. You know what I'm saying? 
Dangerous. But we'll, we'll get on to that differently. Um, what you guys make of the last game? Because uh, this was uh, the third game, right? What do you think about Portugal in their game? Man yeah, like Bruno, you president. know. Man like Bruno, you know. Oh, that's right, Bruno. It, that is Bruno's goal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. Both goals yeah, are yeah, his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Goal, this Ronaldo yeah. goal guy, the most shameless guy in world football. <laughs> Doing the Harry Kane. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You know, he's going to claim that goal. He's going to claim it. He's going to say, Bruno, you got a goal. Give me the other. It's all about the stats for him. But, um, yeah, uh, from what I saw, Bernardo, ridiculously good player. Um, Rafael out off the bench. Uh, man, I reckon we should probably talk about Uruguay because there was a disappointing team in this game. It was them, right? Nunes, Cavani. I thought it hit, but it didn't hit, did it? Yeah, now you're with Uruguay. Something. Their foot, their their tactics, man. They're just in the dark ages, man, of football. Like even the <laughs> penalty, right? The Portuguese players. I love that fact that they actually just surrounded the penalty spot because you know exactly what Uruguay are gonna do. They're gonna try and scuff up that penalty spot. But honestly, this website as well, I've got agenda against it now, man. Why is it giving William Carvalho a seven point six rating? This guy is one of the funniest footballers on the pitch, man. And they're giving nah, Ruben Neves a six point five. This is criminal. Whoever's listen, done this, nah, needs help. Listen. Is this guy no, still Carver, you wasn't watching the game, man. You wasn't watching the game. He was nah. pivotal in the midfield at times. I'll say at times. <laughs> I see him in there doing the genie yeah. thing, recycling the ball. He was in there, man. He was getting stuck in. Um, I don't think this game, I don't think Portugal did enough for me. I think Portugal came out of this looking the way they did because Uruguay haven't turned up to the World Cup. I don't think they know where it is. I don't think they know where the World Cup is. Um mm-hmm. The way people is raving about him, calling out certain names, Valverde is the only one I see in this team looking like he's trying to do something. Everybody else, it's just not coming off. Um, Nunes can get a decent pass into him. Um, if he does get a decent pass, the touch is a little shaky. Cavani, probably about 36 now. They, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I never rated them, but now I'm seeing them proving it. I also feel sorry for them. Like, Jesus, man, a lot of people is banking on you guys, and they just haven't turned up. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think it's clear to see that Ecuador are probably definitely the third best team in South America. Just judging by the World Cup, even <laughs> judging by... <laughs> all I'm going to say some, is... Some people were saying even before all, the tournament. All I'm going to say is World Cup prediction show... You mm, lot, delete I, that video. You, you, you mm. did. Delete it. <laughs> <laughs> because when, when I said England would beat this Uruguay team in the semis, uh, first of all, Uruguay were in the semis. Let's not forget that. They're now going to play Brazil probably if they get through. So, ciao, whatever. England are clear of this Uruguay team, man. It's dark ages football is perfect way to describe them, Bilal. You see Diogo Godin mm-hmm. at the heart of your defence. It is... <laughs> It is. It is anti football, man. It is anti sport. It is anti humanity. Like, no, nah, it's too. It's, it's just... anti. You know that it is. It's it is anti everything because, like, even anti... like Vecino, some of the things he was doing, like they would foul. There was one moment where they fouled one Portuguese. I think Ruben Nevers, and the referee blows a whistle for the free kick. And while the game stopped, they fouled another Portuguese player. I'm like, these guys are insane. Like, it's nothing to do with football. But you know what? They had some chances, and this goalkeeper. For Brazil, uh, for Portugal, rather, he's been getting a lot of shouts recently, a lot of hype um, linked to like Man United, and I think signed a new deal with Porto, five year deal. But he's been looking dodgy this World Cup. I'm not gonna lie, I'm looking at him like he's a bit of a liability in a way. Like he's given me, like he's pulling off some good saves, don't get me wrong. But the way he's inviting pressure and some of the mistakes, it's like, oh, you press him, something could happen. But I just want to shout out one guy as well, and this man here, Pepe, 39 years old. What a legend of the game, man. You know, this is a real centre-back, real defender. So, yeah, let me just big him up quickly. But Portugal, for me, they look... they look. I don't know, do you think they're one of the favourites now? Just looking at them. Even the players they brought off the bench today, like... Uh, who came on? Strength Liao, Ramos. Liao came on. Strength Nunes. Strength. I just yeah, want to... Um, uh, Yusuf, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I am hating. I, 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 would, I am hating. But it is what it is. Like, if I would do the exact same if I was Ronaldo, but I'm, I'm a, I'm hating on Ronaldo. So, fair enough. You're completely right. To be fair, um, <laughs> like, it's true. I, I'm hate, bro. If that was, if that was, if that was a Nunes, I'm claiming Nunes' goal. It's part of being a football fan. But uh, 
Big up Ronaldo though. Loki, this guy, he's dragging them to the final. That's what I'm gonna say. Somehow, he was alright. He had a decent game. He had a decent game. He had a good I thought game, he yeah. looked good. Um, and and Bruno, I'm gonna talk about him. He's in my back, in my background. So I got to big him up for, for. Where is he? This side? Yeah, this side. There, that man there, Kevin De Bruyne. I hope you're watching. That's a real player right there. Bruno yeah, man. Turned up like big shout for Lau. Two Kevin games of football. out here crying, fighting with Courtois. I'm football. seeing reports that he hasn't spoke. Nah, nah, nah. If Bruno was at Man City, is he not going to be doing similar things to KDB? Do you not think in the final third? Like, I remember when Bruno was linked to come to the Premier League and he wasn't linked with Man United first. He was linked with Liverpool. And I remember speaking to my Liverpool friends. They said, oh, listen, it's close, you know. <laughs> He's going to sign for Liverpool, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. The deal, for whatever reason, fell through, ends up at Man United. But I just think this guy... On the on the eye, yes, he'll lose the ball. Yes, he reminds me in a lot of ways um, of um, Aaron Ramsey for Arsenal because Aaron Ramsey used to lose the ball so much, used to shoot at stupid positions, and I used to get frustrated. But you know what? When it mattered, he turned up. Third man running. I get that vibe with Bruno. I get that vibe. Third man running. You know what vibe like... I get with Bruno? I get that uh, Steven Gerrard vibe when Bruno's on it. He's the Portuguese Portuguese Steven Gerrard. You know when he's on it. He's not really always on it, but when he's on it, I'm telling you, man. It's my guy. It's my guy. You got the spirit, man. I like him. I like him, man. He definitely knows how to drag a team. You want to drag a team? Talk about Bruno. Remember when they, he went to United, man? He dragged the man up there, you know. Arm bending. Bro, they were. I remember, Arm I remember bending, that. I don't know about the Gerrard shout, but you know what with Bruno? <laughs> with Bruno, when he went to Man United, yeah, when he went to Man United, remember Oli lost against, was it Burnley? Like, and they were down bad, and it looked like Oli was getting sacked. Bruno comes in, changes everything. And you know what it is oh, with him? His, his, when he's had the ball, as I said, he'll lose it sometimes. He looks funny, but you know what it is? <laughs> I don't mean he looks funny, like, because some people will say he looks funny both ways. I don't mean it in that way. Yeah, just to, looks just funny to on the ball. There. Looks funny on the ball. Yeah, yeah, let's just say on the ball sometimes, like heavy touch or something will go wrong. But yeah, I feel like you just let him operate in the final third, and he'll deliver. Even some of the little passes he was doing today, I was impressed with. So I just want to big him up because I think today he had a really good game, and he turned up when his country needed him to turn up. So, I, yeah, I love you, Zoobs. But that is that is criminal. What you just said. <laughs> no, when Bruno's criminal. on it, bro. You can't tell me that's not Stephen. No, Bruno, Bruno, coming. if you. Compare him stylistically, <laughs> he's probably more Frank Lampard for one. I hear you, he drags his team forward, passion, desire, but he's not got that, he's not got that all star, rock star game that Steven Gerrard has, man. Like, he's Gerrard is all right. First of all, this KDB Bruno thing shouldn't be happening. KDB is clear of him. All right, it's two games, whatever, la di da. Uh, just the way Gerrard was clear of Lampard, it's the same way KDB is clear of Bruno. I, I actually rate Bruno, man, but like. There are levels, and fair enough, he's turned up so far. But mm. the guy's too, the guy's too wasteful. He, he'd be the Ramsey one, the Frank Lampard one, prime Deli Ali, that sort of like player where they just get goals, mm. they get numbers, they they're able to be in, they they work hard, they're in in the right place at the right time. Um, fair play, but there's a new dinner table when you're talking about uh, Steven Gerrard. That's a uh, that's the that's I'm talking to Dan's and all of that. So, are you are you talking like in terms of like stylistically or like in terms of like ability? No, just dragging a Presence. team, man. I said, I Presence. think you guys are taking it out Energy. of context. Yeah, just dragging a team, oh, okay, bro. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who, bro enough, who's dragging enough, this Portugal enough. team? Not fair Ronaldo enough. with his um with his loose claims. Nobody else is dragging this team. You think KDB dragged the team like Bruno can drag a team? No. And who's no. notorious for dragging a team? Gerard. So I'm not, bro. When I say these comparisons, bro, they're spot on, you know. They're very spot on. Is people want to take it out of context. Yeah, don't go, don't go crazy, man. Just relax. Listen uh -huh. to the context. When it comes to dragging a team, this guy is Gerard-esque. End of it, man. That's it. I'm not talking about touches, shots, none of that other stuff. In terms, you know, of, for a in terms of kind. like his his like impact on a team, fair enough. In yeah, terms man. Of, like, yeah, right, I can I can hear that. I, yeah, I can I can shake your hand on that. All right, that's all. That's all I ask for, man. That's all I ask <laughs> for. Him, but we yeah, we give him his oh, time. Oh, we got to talk about Nunes though. At some point, I've never mentioned this guy before, and now I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. This guy is looking sus. 
Was he, he playing? No, 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 no. He's always coming up with the worst rating in the team. You can't, you can't, you can't be. Uh, in, I will not take this World Cup in context regarding Nunes, right? Because this Uruguay team, it's like playing up front for peak Burnley, right? <laughs> peak Burnley, man. Like peak Sean Dyche, tough to beat. What's the what's the word they keep using about Uruguay on like TV and everything? Wiley or something? Like they conceded two in ten, whatever. They're they 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 they're just hard to break down, but they they don't want to do anything going forward. They're mm-hmm. when, actually when they when they changed the system and they got Suarez Gomez on, they took Godin off, whatever. They went four at the back, I think. Right when they did that, they looked good. They looked threatening, but until the whole time Nunes was on. He had nothing supporting him. He had Cavani, who runs around, fair enough, but Cavani's not the same player. He had Valverde, Bentancur, uh, Vecina, whatever, just having to do a lot of work in midfield, couldn't really get forward. The wing-backs didn't really do anything. Oliveira was actually more attacking when he played left-back than when he played left-wing-back, which makes no sense. So, I, I, will, I, will take, I will take this with a pinch of salt, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think Nunes, you, you need a... Maybe you call him a system player, but you need certain service and certain sort of players around him or like a certain style of play that gets the best out of him. I think this Uruguay team is the complete sort of antithesis of everything Darwin Nunes needs. It could be down to the manager as well uh, or the coach, whatever they call the international guys. Should be sacked because you see that Vecino guy. Mm -hmm. He's like 30, 31 and they have a 20, 21 year old guy in there from a sporting, I believe. Ugarte or Ugarte, however you pronounce his name. The guy's a baller, you know, and he got legs for days. And you're going to put a 31-year-old over this guy. Now, that's criminal, man. So some of these World Cup coaches, man, they should be sacked off, man. Like, bring me in, man. I can do a better job because you're putting in these old guys and then you're asking them to run up and down and they just can't do it. And Nunes, if they're banking on him to drag the team, he needs to take a page out of Bruno's book or Gerard's book, bro, because... he needs to know, like, you can't just be standing out on the left if you're not getting in the game. You got to get in the game, man. I don't care if you got to go uh, right wing, center mid. You got to get in the game, man. You can't just be like, oh, the coach says stay here. Like, bro, he's starving out there. I'm not saying he should disrespect his coach, but, bro, every time we pull up this table, man, he has the lowest rating for Uruguay. It's not you know what it is, right, Nunes? Man. You can't tell him to drop deep. In. He, let's be honest. He can't really do that. That's not his game. His game is running and causing problems, and then in the box, score. Because even when I watched him live, and I had a great view of him, uh, the Arsenal-Liverpool game, I was watching him, and he is one of the biggest problems I've seen Arsenal come up against this season just because of his movement. The way he's running, he doesn't stop. He's just, he just, every don't know where he's like, he's erratic. You know what I mean? But if you ask him now to drop deep and come on, do something, the team's struggling to get the ball, it's not going to happen. That's why for Liverpool... With the rest of the team, which has quality players, he's gonna he's gonna be good. He's gonna score goals. Wow. But when you go to Uruguay and the team now struggling to play football to start with, <laughs> bro, you're gonna be yeah, he's gonna be struggling for a while with that team. But when they came on with like Palestri, as Omar said, and they made a few changes, it started looking good. They started and Gomez a few good. chances. Um, yeah, Gomez looked good. Like they looked, yeah, they looked decent. They looked decent at that. I thing. think um, yeah. Look, all I'm gonna say is thank you, World Cup. For, for sorting this out. Uruguay versus Ghana. Revenge or once more like for 2010. Then you've got what? Serbia, Switzerland. The Battle of the Balkans, whatever it is. Then you've got USA versus Iran. The, whoever wins that takes custody of democracy. I don't know. So the World Cup has, <laughs> the World Cup has thrown in some immense... These games, are, these games are like knockout games. They are knockout games. I think well done because how many there's only three teams that have qualified for the world for the next round, I believe France, Brazil, and Portugal. That's it. So everything else is to play for. I think the only teams that have gone out are um, Qatar and Canada. So, yeah, look, man. Hey, you know, um, you know what? On, on that shout for the, the next game for Uruguay. I know Quasi is in the chat and, you know, he's in the building and he's, he's probably waiting on us to touch on this because this is the moment he's been waiting for. Man said he ain't supporting Nunes because he needs revenge. And I'm telling you, he's licking his lips. 
he's preparing dinner early because he's going to think he's going to eat against this Uruguay team. And, oh, what a beautiful story it'll be if Uruguay just turns up on the last day. Oh. <laughs> Zoom, you've been, you've been plotting on Ghana. Bro, you can't ever go to Ghana, bro. You've been plotting no, on you know, <laughs> Nah, you know, the thing is, man, um, not like Quasi, man, good guy, but, you know, when he said he ain't supporting Nunes, it hurt me a little wait, bit, you know. I'm just wait, like, wait, wait, stop, stop. Man, is this about the US-Iran game? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, boys. It's true. <laughs> Did you see the Iran journalist versus Tyler Adams? Like he's on to him. Why are you calling us yeah. Iran and all of this? And then Tyler Adams just calm. Like, bro, oh, like, I didn't know three is, okay, World War Three is on the line in this game, man. Like, Listen, it's like it's like a war. It's the game, World Cup, man. man. It's the beauty of it, man. I'm seeing people coming for me in the chat, man. I'm telling you, I'm having this agenda against Ghana until Uruguay slapped them up, man. Nunes, you know what I'm saying, knocks them out of it, man. So it's just the World Cup, man. What 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 other sport, you know, gives us the platform to just be like this and and, 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 and solve these problems we have in the world and, and these jokes, man? It's going to be beautiful. Iran, USA. I'm yeah. telling you, if we lose, man, if USA lose that game, man, it's peak. You know, the World Cup is going to be banned after this tournament. It's getting too much. It's getting too much. This is like this. <laughs> Uruguay, go on, like Uruguay, go on alone, right? I said like diplomatic <laughs> relations are going to be cut after this game. Like it's gonna go south. <laughs> I love, I love Ghana. Yeah, I love. I want all these African teams to do well. Yeah, but if Luis Suarez's last ever goal in in history, <laughs> in history, is a winner, a last minute dagger against Ghana, I might retire from football. Are you? You'll, you'll, see me, yeah? you'll see me on some random podcast talking about relationships and music, whatever. I will not be talking about fo- football. With a peak. Football with a peak, man. Football with a peak. That's what I'm going to say. If I see that, I might, I might not watch football again. If I see that, oh, I can't even going through that twice. Like you know, quasi has been on to me saying I'm not being back in Ghana. But when Suarez did that handball and then Asamoah John missed that penalty. I was like, oh my God. But if I, if that happens 12 years later, down the line, old man Suarez scores the winner against Ghana, sends them home again. Nah, nah, nah. This is... Yeah, look. This check the tapes, stopped. people. I said it, you know. I'm not backing him unless they can get out this group. And I'm telling you, against Uruguay, it's looking slim. Don't worry about Uruguay's performance in Nunes 5.6 and, and 6.5 ratings so far. I'm telling you, these men can turn up against Ghana because they know they have that ticket already. They already purchased that ticket early, so they might just be cruising and we'll never know. But if Ghana gets out, yeah, I'll back them fully. But as of right now, man, they got to get over Uruguay. And that's just the way it is. It, the, the last games for most of the groups are just going to be some interesting headlines, and I'm looking forward to it. But you want to touch on uh, the game from yesterday um, real quickly? Before yeah, yeah. Out, Let's look at the game from yesterday just quickly. And uh, Omar was he was dancing on my grave yesterday, bro, when this <laughs> game finished. And I couldn't believe what I was watching. Like, this manager for Japan, like, what what, what was this lineup? Like, Mitoma, why is he not playing? Like, Asano scored the goal the other day. Like, Bro, even Tomiyasu, even if he's half fit, man, just get him in there somewhere. But to be fair, the defence for me wasn't even that big. It was the attacking players. Like, I didn't understand Japan. I know it was really hot. They kept saying before the game, like, it's 31, 32 degrees, there's going to be water breaks. I don't think there was a water break, but it was really, maybe it was very slow. That first half was the most unforgettable first half. Well, forgettable, rather, first half that you could have watched this World Cup. But the goal they conceded as well was so bad. You know when it's just so bad? It's like, how are you going to lose to that goal? And that just gave Germany, obviously, a chance to catch life and, and go through to the next round, potentially. So, yeah, I don't know what you guys want to um, say about this game. But for me, yeah, pain, pain. That's all I had to say. Yeah, no, nah, this game was criminal, man. Um, <clears throat> bro, I don't understand why he went five at the back. The formation you're seeing here isn't the formation he went with. He went with five at the back. You watch this team get slapped up by seven in the first game, and you go five at the back. It's almost like no team wanted to attack each other in the first half, you know. No team literally wanted to attack. It was just watching a stalemate. And I don't think Japan is suited to be dominant on the ball. They're the type of team that they'll let you come on to them and they catch you on the counter. So when they had the ball, bro, they had no idea what to do with it. No, they, Dude, they were just standing around <laughs> passing it sideways for like 30 minutes. And and credit to Costa Rica, um, 
bro, that goal. It, it, if you watch it in slow mo, it's the same mm -hmm. speed as if you watch it in real time. So, so much so the keeper dived early and on the way down, he just like gets some fingertips to it and he went in. It was a decent goal, well taken, but I mean, the keeper had more time than he thought. And this game was a big letdown. I think the guy made like five changes and he yeah. went like five at the back. I, I'm not sure why he went so defensive. He paid Costa Rica way too much respect and ended up um, paying the price for it. A uh, bit shame, man, but now I can't even back him to get out the group. Um, who they play next? They um, Japan plays uh, Japan, Spain. So much. Yeah, they play the Spain line. next, man. That show that night, below is gonna be. What I say, Japan. They're gonna win. They're gonna rise it. They're gonna rise it. All the good players are gonna get on the pitch. Ito, Mitoma, Asano, Kamada. Let's just go all out attack, and Spain in behind. There, there's something to be. That Unai Simon, pressure him, pressure him, and. There'll be a goal just from him maybe kicking it into his own net or something like that. One of, one of us I are crying it. on stream. That's all I'm going to say. One of us are crying on stream. <laughs> to be honest, right? To be honest, right? I Watching the games, right? I wanted I want Spain and Japan both to go through. But it's got to the point now, obviously, like Germany play Costa Rica. So they should go through. Hey, Imagine Costa Rica go don't through. Don't sleep on Costa Rica. Everyone remembers 2018 World Cup. Germany, South Korea. Everyone was like, Germany, if they win this game... They 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 they're through to the next round. I think they needed a point or something, right? They lost two nil to South Korea. They lost two nil. So <sighs> damn, Honestly, Costa Rica could do this, man. <laughs> nah, they can't. No, nah, I'm not even gonna hype it. You never Usually, know. I'll make some lucky. wild takes. Costa they're Rica not gonna do point, it, man. really. If they find a way, nah, they're not gonna. Help. They're not gonna do it, man. Germany is gonna um. The only fault I can see Germany doing is drawing the game, and that that will just send Costa Rica through. But Germany will win this, man, and then it'll be Germany going through, unless Japan can do an upset on Spain, which, mm -hmm. to be fair, I didn't give them much credit. You know what I mean? But listen, man, this this I agree with you. You know why Germany are gonna? They might just absolutely destroy Costa Rica. It's that striker. Did you see the way he finished full that goal? Full, full, full Yo, his thank is. you. A proper nine. A That's moment. it. God, and he's God, massive. Man. He's going to... He might eat them alive. The way he pushed Listen, Musiala off the ball. He said, Musiala, go, I was a little kid. <laughs> move. Listen. It's my turn. <laughs> but did Musiala get like a... Uh, not like a one-on-one, -on -one, but a good opportunity. And the keeper saved it, I think. Um, Like moments mm. before that. And then he's, he's still again. Yeah. And that guy was like, Listen, man. He, this is not your forte. This is <laughs> my forte. Here. Bro, get he smashed it, you know. I was like, all right, so that is full Krug. All right, I'll be zooming in. I'll be toning in now for the next game. Yeah, if they start him up front, man, he can actually drag them through. This guy ain't no team or one or, or Havertz, bro. This guy is the real deal. This guy is, my job is to put this ball in the back of the net, and I'll do all of that. So I'm excited to see them go through now, man. I think they have a decent striker. I didn't know the guy before that game. He's here. Um, this game was a bit of an upset, man. Morocco. Yeah, Morocco. now all my stocks are on Morocco, man. Morocco. I'm red Ziyech, but I got stocks in Morocco now. Do you, did you see that manager called Amrabat, world class? Uh, what, <laughs> nah, the, nah, nah, nah. Uh, the manager, manager said Amrabat's world class and he'll get a move to... Bro, this guy was struggling at Watford, I swear. I swear, this was is the not... same... Yeah, yeah. This is the he was same linked Am to Tottenham recently. He was literally this going the... to Tottenham. This is the same Amrabat. <laughs> I'm not tripping. The one who was at Watford. Check the statistics. Yeah, I'm not but, sure. But I know this yeah, guy was into it, it Tottenham is, a few months ago. Is. And I thought he was going there. And I don't know what happened. No, I, I think, say, obviously, it might not be. he collapsed. Misuma went there. No, because that guy's bold. Yeah, no. Nah, this Amrabat been bold, bold, bro. I don't think he's been yeah, in the yeah. prem, but I rate him highly, you know. No, no, no. I always get him on one. FIFA. It's a different one. Oh, calm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, this, no, this one's a new one. This one's a new one. This one was at Fiorentina. It was at Italy. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like yeah, Fiorentina. Yeah, yeah, Fiorentina. Yeah, 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 I'm telling you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, this guy is cream, man. Yeah, I like yeah. this guy. Good profile. Yeah. Amrabat. Yeah. Who is Eunice net Eunice Eunice. That's his brother, Nordin. Ah, oh, okay. Eunice, thank you, man. Yeah, I, I don't know. I see Amrabat, I just assume. Yeah, fair enough, then. The world-class shouts could be true. Because Nordin ain't. <laughs> Nordin ain't. Nordin, Nordin, man. That guy, 
winger. I don't know what he was. Wing back, winger. He was just doing. He was just existing. NPC, Premier League NPC. You see them Premier League NPCs like mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you remember Stephen Fletcher? You remember the striker for Sunderland, Premier League NPC. Like uh, these guys just talk about NPCs. Eden Hazard. He's finished, man. He's finished. That's all we have to Why say. Why isn't his him. brother starting over him? That's what I want to know. He did, he did start. The problem is, I'd rather his brother play at left wing and Trossard play at left wing back than Hazard. It's, bro, it's hampering the team. Sometimes you just got to take the L. Sometimes, look at Man United. They played better without Ronaldo. Belgium, you'll play better without Hazard. Hazard, mm-hmm. on his day, one of the best players in the world. But, uh, Origi should have gone, though. Everyone That's knows because definitely, well, because he wasn't playing that much for Milan, he's been struggling. They didn't take him, but Lukaku's not fit. They brought him on for what? For what? What's he gonna do? Rap? Like, is he gonna start giving advice on the touchline to KDB? I don't know if this is a wild doing? take. Still, um, yeah. so I had a little back office set up streaming the games with um, my cousin in Jamaica and uh, another guy from the UK, and and we're back streaming, and these men are trying to tell me Lukaku came on the team and made the team worse to the point where they lost the game. Um, I didn't, I didn't see that such, but um, upon a oh, review, man, I think it's Lowly factual. Man, he gets cooked. Yeah, they... <laughs> What's he gonna do? He's What's not he even fit. Tell, you know who tell... we should be cooking? Forget Lukaku. Let's start properly and cook this guy, Courtois, best in the world. I was saying, <laughs> well done saving that Alfonso <laughs> Davis, bro. You conceded the same goal twice, and the first time you got lucky. Like, bro, what is going on? <laughs> and I'm seeing now they're saying bust up in the Belgium training um, ground between, as you know, Sp- I love Spanish media because they're like, De Bruyne and Courtois, they have not spoken in years. No, oh, maybe they haven't. And we all, and they said private reasons. Listen, if you know, you know, you know. You know, you know. Yeah, if you know, you know, exactly. But Courtois there, like, stinker of a game from him. And he needs to be 10 out of 10 for Belgium to have any chance of doing anything. The midfield, tired. Odana coming off slow, Why not? boring, lethargic. Slow. And this guy here, bro, do you know a Man City, bro? Every day crossing, like even wow. eight. I, I remember, I think it was eighty something minute. I was like, bro, he did, it, he did it again. He just crossed without looking. Like you know, Jordan Henderson does it and he gets cooked. Oh, Jordan Henderson just whipped the ball in and he's not looking. Da da da. Yeah. This guy's doing the same thing. You're doing. You're doing the same thing as Jordan Henderson. And Jordan Henderson suffers abuse from people. <laughs> Why can't why is Kevin De Bruyne getting away with this? I will not let him get away with this criminality, but yeah, yeah, Belgium, there's no hope for them, and I'm happy that they lost this game because they just need to go home at this point. And yeah, big up Morocco, their manager as well, celebrations, everything, and the streets of Brussels, man. Yeah, they knew Morocco, (laughs) that's what I'm gonna say. But yeah, would you guys want to talk about Ziyech and any thoughts on him and how Chelsea kill creativity and you see what he's doing here? Uh, I don't even know. I just think these guys care about their country more. It's a bit of Gareth Bell syndrome. Like, you just you just sat there <laughs> making, <laughs> making, making peas on bench. Like, calm. You you did your thing at Ajax. You, you, you have, he has a Champions League, right? He, yeah, bro, he's chilling. This is his nation. This is his nation at the World Cup. Mm-hmm. He puts his body on the line. His heart is in it. ZX's heart is in this game. So it is Gareth Bell syndrome, man. Like, I won't be surprised if he just goes back to Ajax and chills and, 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 and is a bit silky. But he doesn't need the stress of Barclays. He wants the joy and freedom of World Cup. And that's what he's getting. So I hope Morocco get out of this group, man. Because yeah. they're, not, they're really the only exciting thing about this group. I know Croatia scored four, but Croatia do not excite me. Right? Croatia. Doesn't excite you at all? Not a little bit. That midfield, just uh, watching the class of it at times. Good. Modric is good, but then, bro, you know, when it comes to knockout games, yeah, this team, mm. they're going to be side to side passing. They might draw nil nil. They might draw one one. It'll go to penalties. They'll penalty their way to the semis again. Bro, someone, <laughs> someone, someone just needs to, someone just needs to just stick it on them. Someone just needs to stick it on them and just say, you're not as good. It's Modric pissing me off. He doesn't piss me off. One of the greatest midfielders of all time. But, bro, you're so old. Why are you running so much? Why are you this good? Brozovic, Kovacic. Like, these guys are just, they're just timeless. And it's just like, surely something's got to break. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
you can't be 37 year old and running teams down like this. Like something's got to break. So I just feel like a team, if they really stuck it on Croatia, like, mm. yeah, exactly. Eunice, I agree. They just picked them off. Um, yeah, I just, they don't excite me. I agree, to be honest, because that attack, like, Kramerich is not that good, but Canada made him look like that guy. You know, they, at the back, Canada wasn't good. But Canada, with the goal that they scored and the energy that they have, you get excited for a while. But really, the quality of Modric, as Omar says, like, that guy, even Champions League, when they won it the last run, and I'm just seeing him, just all of a sudden, just buddying and go look Kante. You know, just like Modric, all of a sudden, the PMP, everything, he's got it. And it's just like, how old is he, like, 37 38, I don't even know how old he is. He, he might be yeah, didn't he win the Ballon d'Or? By the time he retires at this point. Yeah, he won it like after the World Cup, the, right? You, the year they beat us in the Champions yeah. League. 2018, yeah. yeah. No, this guy, yeah, yeah, now you got to put respect on this guy's name, man. This guy is... Uh, oh, respect. Guy is, respect. Definitely respect. Bro, this guy is a legend. You can't go up against a legend and just take his three points like that. No, nah, man. <laughs> this, guy, <laughs> this guy means business, man. I knew Canada was going to do the gung-ho thing in the first 20 and then try to hold it. But, yo, it was just a matter of time before these guys get back in the game. And these guys are a quality team. Yeah, they're old, fully experienced, though, man. If you're not on it on the day, you know, credit to Cramerich. If you're not on it, man, this guy will do his thing. Like, you have to show this guy that he ain't all that. But if you give him the opportunity to prove himself, he will, bro. And that's what this team is. Like you said, Omar, if you run up on this team, you are be like, oh, they're just the average team. But if you just be all you know, reserve and laid back, bro. They can hurt you, man, and, and they showed it. I, I was really surprised how much they peeled off on Canada, man. I was, I was like, wait, they had that much goal in them? Bro, it's... Yeah. It was immense. Oh, Any quick game. thoughts on Spain, Germany before we go Didn't to... Didn't even watch games? it, you know. My Spain stocks stay high. My Spain stocks mm -hmm. stay high. Everyone, yeah, now nah, Spain is going through. Um, Disappointing, but I think they'll still pull through. Morata, Credit to the striker. Man. The thing is, yeah... It's tournament football for me. I've always seen this. In Wait, does anyone remember how Spain won the 2010 World Cup? Do you want me to tell you their score lines? First, they lost 0 1 in the mm -hmm. first game, then they went 2 0, 1 0, mm -hmm. last 16, 1 0. They won quarterfinals, they won 1 0, semi final, they won 1 0, final, they won 1 0. No. That's all you have to do to win a World Cup. You don't need it's not a league where you might need a Haaland. A Nunes, no, I'm sure. a Haaland, a Lewandowski, these types of guys that, that you know are bagging you 30, 40 goals in a league campaign. You just need goals from everywhere. You need you need centre-backs that can get up at, at crucial times. You need midfielders that can chip in. You need wingers that can chip in. You need people off the bench that can chip in. As long as you have people um, that can chip in. I thought this was technically... The like in terms of like tactics and everything, the standout game of the World Cup so far probably wasn't the most exhilarating, but like in yeah. terms of actual quality, this game would not look a miss in like a Champions League knockout game, right? Because the quality of play on show was immense, and I thought Spain started really well, Germany come back into it. I think, yeah, two top quality teams and the two best managers in the competition, Hansi Flick and Luis Enrique. Luis Enrique says he's the best manager in the world. I don't think so, but he's definitely the best manager in this tournament, in my opinion. He said that by himself. Like, he's anointed himself the best manager in the world. I rate it. Like, I believe you're the best, isn't it? But it's a bit weird. I don't know. To say you're the best a little bit. But yeah, fair, fair enough if he wants to go that direction. But yeah, it was a good game. Spain, as we expected them, dominating the board. The one thing that I would like to see, though, and I've got nothing against the kid, young Gavi. He works hard. He's... He, tries he's good on the ball i would like to see him um come out the team and put Omar with pedri in midfield and get like an ansu fati down the left and that will maybe give me and and get morata up front as well 100 morata needs to start up front get them to win the team and Tiago, for me man tiago would have made his team different yeah i, I would I have, yeah tiago, tiago definitely yeah. i honestly don't get that's the one thing i don't get from enrique like why mm -hmm. tiago for me tiago is Top three, four, five on his day. Like if concerning his injury ability, availability, or whatever, in terms of just raw ability, he's top three, four, five midfielder in the world without a doubt. So the fact he's not in this squad, man, it's just like. But Roger at centre back, like maybe, yeah, well, go on. Well, I was just gonna say maybe he feels Thiago 
you know, like Thiago, the way he plays, like it's flair. It's like very obviously Brazilian. Yeah? yeah, maybe it's not that. You know, even at Barcelona, he didn't do well. He didn't even broke in fully. I think it's just the way he plays and the way he looks sometimes doing things, and maybe he holds onto the ball a little bit longer yeah. than the other players. I think just those little things they have an agenda yeah. against him already, despite how good he is. And that's I got an agenda really against him on that team. too, man. Yeah, he for Spain and and what Spain are trying to do in the way they play, he's very Brazilian in that way, and it's ca- actually counterproductive to what Spain is doing. And to be fair, on his day, yes, Omar is like top four, but how often is he on his day? You know what I mean? Because sometimes he'll just be like a liability. So um, I don't think he's ever a liability, but he he does have better days. But when but come on, I. We won't get into it from a Liverpool perspective, but I think if you need someone to like break, like produce a bit of magic, even off the bench, like you want him at least in your squad in that midfield. I think he'd actually suit playing in a bit of a higher role in this Spain team, Mm -hmm. like playing in a 10, weirdly. Like, yeah, he's not really a 10, he doesn't really get the goals like that, but I feel like his link up play, his combination play, his sort of vision in and around the box, it. Yeah, I it, I agree. It doesn't suit their footballing philosophy. It doesn't suit that one touch, two touch, tiki taka philosophy. But he gives you that X factor in midfield that you need. Mm-hmm. And I feel like maybe yes, yeah, Spain maybe lack a bit of X factor in midfield. Maybe if you if you bring Thiago off the bench um, um, yesterday, he might find Inaki Williams and Morata a bit more because those are his sort of players. Because those guys aren't Barcelona. Those mm-hmm. guys are. Atletico Madrid, Atletico Bilbao, Real Madrid, Juventus, direct, aggressive yeah. players. So I feel like he would compliment them a bit more. Um, but hey, um, Luis Enrique, I still got a lot of stocks in you, bro. You have to, you have to have the stocks in him. Even I don't know, Parejo was he? Does he retired from the national team or something? Like I would have liked to see him go because I look at their midfield, and outside of Pedri and Olmo. I'm not really convinced by like, you know, that number eight who's going to really create all the time. That uh, outside of them two, I look at it like Gavi's not for me, he's not going to do it like that. It's not really his game. Who else they got? I say Koke, Llorente. Okay, like, yeah. yeah, like it's Carlos Soler is another option, I think. Carlos Soler yeah. is a great option, I think. I think he could be like a bit of an um, X factor off the bench. But Koke, man, like, no offense, but. He's been at Atletico too long. He's <laughs> he's he's been Simeonified far too long, man. Like it's time to just I don't know let it go. But yeah, should we should we get on to tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. So okay. tomorrow is the first of the double barrel games. I don't like that, you know. Yeah, I'll go. Uh, and, yeah, it's good, man. I'm not missing out too much if I'm at work or anything, man. I go. can chill. Yeah, oh, you so set nice. this up the loud. All right, calm. <laughs> Group guys have been enjoying too much, man. Four games in one day, nah. nah, nah. Group A. Oh, that's a game. Ecuador, Senegal. That's that's whoever wins that goes through. What Senegal, Ecuador on four points, Senegal. On... Wait, 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 stop. Wait, wait, stop. Zoom. You meant double barrel does in wait. All of these games are tomorrow, like two games at the same time. Yeah. Yes, that's what I meant. And you're like, yeah, nah, yeah, this calm, is bro. That's nah, just... Zoom. <laughs> Zoom, I'm with you. This is purely criminal. What what's the point? <laughs> no, they have to, they have to, they have to, they have to. They do this every World Cup, don't they? Because of the um, groups. Because of like they need to, because it'd be unfair on one team to know what to do. Like, say, 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 oh, say, I get say, it. I get say, it. say, Senegal, or say, Ecuador drew against Senegal, right? Netherlands wouldn't need to win against Qatar. They'd, they'd be able to draw and still top the group. So they have to, like, play them at the same time, these final games. So, um, yeah, it, it yeah, it's just, it's just the way it is. Um, Omar with the logics, it makes sense, but I'm still fuming, man. I'm still fuming, but you I get what you're saying. Screen. Yeah, I get what you're saying, bro. But uh, now that's really football overload, man. Trying to track two teams, two games yeah, at nah, the same time. Myth, no, I can't. I can't even do this. Bro. We're gonna. Yeah, but it makes sense. It makes sense. Delegate games to each other. We'll be like, you watch this one. I'm watching this one, so we can come back and give. Well, the game to watch is Ecuador Senegal. That's the one with stakes in it. Because yeah, yeah, I'm definitely. not mistaken. Let me get the um table because. I don't know about you, but I feel like Netherlands are absolutely handing one to Qatar. No offense, Qatar, but Netherlands, if they want to top this group and avoid England, most likely, then 
Yeah, you're 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 taking this Qatar game seriously, and I imagine Memphis might be back, uh, which is which is crucial. Like back as in starting. So Senegal, Senegal got to get the win. But I don't, I don't think, think they're getting it. Yeah. Ecuador, I mean, Ecuador looks more promising, man. Unless um, the the striker is pretty banged up because every time he comes off, he's coming off the ice on the knee or ice on the leg. So, but if he's starting, man, I don't think they'll have enough to go far. But I think they'll have enough to get out the group. Um, Senegal without Mane looking toothless, but you know I'm backing them to do a job, and they need to do this for Mane, man. Got to do this for Mane. Hold up the shirt and all of that, man, on the celebrations. Yeah, come on, Senegal. What are you doing, man? Hold up the Mane shirt. You remember um, Italy did that for um, Spinozola at the Euros? Yeah. Come on, man. You got to be holding up the Mane shirt, Senegal. Come on, what are you doing? Well, Brazil Brazil did that for Neymar and held seven to Germany. So mm. it, could, it, could <laughs> it, could, it, could, it could go one or two ways, you know what I mean? Um, um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Enna Valencia, man. Like, the World Cup. I don't know what is he the World Cup batters dudes. I don't know the guy's clutch in the World Cup, so I won't be surprised if he if he turns it on. I think that's what that's what Senegal are missing, right? They're missing Sadio Mane, whereas Ena Valencia ha- uh, mm-hmm. Ecuador have their sort of their bagsmen up front. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think Ena Valencia has just been incredible, and just the whole Ecuador team, the energy they have, it's completely different to Senegal. Even though Senegal scored those three goals against Qatar. The football they play is just not it, man. Everything feels so sluggish, slow, heavy, lethargic. And compared to Ecuador, Ecuador's completely different. They're energetic, they're young, they're exuberant. They've got the experience as well, obviously, of, of Ena Valencia out front. I just think they win this game and potentially, if it goes down to goal difference, the thing is because <laughs> the Dutch are playing Qatar, you expect them to get goals. But I, I don't know. I could see Ecuador winning this game like pretty well. But then again, you wouldn't be surprised with Mendy and Kula Bali if Senegal make it tough. But yeah, looking at just judging based on everything I've seen from both teams in this World Cup and even going with what I've seen with Senegal before, Ecuador have to win this game, surely. I need them to go through anyway. I'd, I'd rather watch them in the knockout yeah. rounds than Senegal, to be honest. Senegal are a tough team to beat, man. That that defence is solid, midfield solid, it's up front. I don't know, I'm, I'm weirdly going to Senegal's side now. I don't know why. Mm. But um, yeah, I I'm feeling more Senegal. But look, uh, yeah, I think I think that group, yeah, fair enough. But they got this one. Everyone can qualify. Um, Listen, man. Now nah, 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 let's be honest, man. England are gonna cook Wales. England are gonna obliterate Wales, and that's with me who had. I'm one of the few guys who've got sympathy towards Wales. I said, let's give them a free W if we, if we beat the USA. But nah, England are going to... After that draw against America, there's talks though about Bellingham being dropped and Henderson coming in. I, I don't Good. know if that's true. Good. Um, Come on. Bellingham didn't, Bellingham didn't have a great game uh, against him, America. The lights were too bright. But no, I would no, rather... Okay. I'd rather Foden maybe come in. Well, but where's he going to play? changes. Do you reckon... I reckon Foden might start. You think? Yeah, or Grealish said... as a ten, or Grealish as a ten, and I'd like Ra- Rashford to start as well. Oh, Rashford be a great shout, but I mean, he plays Rashford off the right, doesn't he? I think nah, he goes. Yeah. Or I think he might play. He could drop Saka. You know, is he going to drop yeah. Sterling? He's, He's not could dropping. He needs to drop Kane. Man. I think if he drops Saka, if he drops Saka, that's a problem. He'll end up probably putting Foden there, and for me, as a right winger, he probably just weakened it. If instead, if you're going to drop Saka, you put Sterling for me on the right wing. At least it's a different option, a different type of player on the right. And then maybe you can play a Rashford or a Grealish. But I wouldn't drop Saka for Foden in that position. I'd rather Foden play in the middle. But yeah, I don't know. Henderson's going to play apparently. So that already is one decision that might if surprise If plays, there might be a shout for my man, Trent. Trent. Because Trippier, this is not an agenda, by the way. This is just objective viewage. Trippier mm. has not been good this World Cup. And I don't think that's wild to say. It. So if anyone comes at me saying that's an agenda, that's not wild. <coughs> His delivery, everything, bang average. Defensively, fine. He's not really had to do much. But when you need something at right back, 
You go Trent. I actually think Carl Walker might start. I think this is where Carl Walker comes in and just keeps his place because we all know what Carl Walker brings to a team. He brings that mm. pace, that energy, that experience. That it's what you want at right back. He brings that all round defensive package. So <sighs> Trent should play. Trent, if this is a game to try Trent in, um, yeah. And yeah, I think Ben White's even ill, so he's not even might, might not even be in the squad. I think this is the game. Trent mm -hmm. has to play because Trippier. Nope. No, no, I'll tell you why. Trippier, even um, Kendall came on the other day, Newcastle fan. So Trippier's not even been good watching these games. And of course, that's from a Newcastle fan who's been watching Trippier week in, week out. And we know how, how good he's been anyway in the Premier League. Yeah. But every second ball, every little 50 50, every little moment where take a touch, control the ball, get it to the Sackers or the Bellinghams, it's been difficult for him. He, every phase of the game for me, he's looked a little bit sus. And Trent, at least if he plays, I know. On the ball quality, guaranteed. So yeah, I'd like to see him start. Nah. Do you reckon we could see a Look, formation change? Um, one hundred percent formation change, but I don't think Trent should come in because here's the thing: I'm I'm a bit fearful with the Trent agenda, man. Because can you imagine? Nah, back nah stick you can't you can't of, live in fears, Barry. You got to live. Nah, in listen, man. Here's the thing. Here's the <laughs> thing, though. With Gareth Southgate, you always you always set these moments up the way he he operates with this team and. Bro, if Trent comes in and England isn't been looking solid at right back all tournament, no one would bring that up, you know. They would just bring up the last game that cost them the tournament. So even if he goes with Trent at the back and put Hendo in the middle, is he going to really stick with Trent and Hendo throughout the tournament? So I, I, I agree with you. I think this can be the, the one we see uh, Kyle Walker coming in. But I'm looking to see Rashford down the middle, man. Harry Kane... I don't think he's 100% fit. And we've seen him at Tottenham not 100% fit, costing him the final. Granted, it was against us, but they had a better team without Kane and they had a better opportunity without Kane going into that final. Yeah. I think Kane is, yeah, as good as he is, if he's not 100, he needs to be on the bench, bro. Stop doing up that Lukaku vibe. Because I'm surprised. Hard. Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised the way they drew against USA. Like, I, I had him 100% smashing up the USA and then... They did nothing. So that that tells me Wales have an opportunity to do something there. I don't think they will. But as far as like USA, bro, two draws in the tournament, can they really pull a win over Iran? I don't know. I think they'll do the Canada I vibes. Think they I think will, they'll often puff first half and, and Iran will just be like, yeah, we got this from here and, and, and cruise through, man. So USA. Believe in America, man. Yeah, they've got a much better yeah. team than Canada. The goalkeeper, everything, yeah. Land of hope and glory, right? Come on, man. Have some faith. <laughs> Have some yeah, faith, man. Yeah, this bit. USA okay. versus Iran game, this guy will be <laughs> unbelievable. Nah, this Soccer. game, yeah. You can't lose to Bro. Iran. You can't lose. This is, this is mad. If you lose to Iran, you have to give back, like, I don't know. All the money. <laughs> this is this is oh, no, it's a very, this is tomorrow. What well, oh, I know it's today. I was gonna say it's, this is the real Monday night football, but they're playing on a Tuesday. Because I know I know you lot have your Monday night football, and it's all about the the American one, bro. Monday. They but, call it soccer over here. These men cannot. You guys cannot let USA go very far in this tournament. No, it's fine. They man. call it, bro. They call it soccer. Hey, I'm telling you. I'll try to get you guys the link, and you'll hear the way they cover the game in the US. Like, yeah. it's it's a tough watch, man. It's a, I have to mute the games when I'm watching it sometimes. But it's, it's weird, you know, Omar, in the UK, tell Zub, like, in the UK, we have something called Soccer Saturday. Like, we've yeah. always had it. Why is it called soccer? We have something called Soccer Saturday, one of the biggest, like, um, football shows every Saturday, obviously, in the UK. Been going for years. It's called Soccer Saturday. And the word soccer, if you, if you look at the history, it started in England. But there's a reason yeah, because, in America. Yeah, because soccer is defined as a round ball, where football is defined as an oval ball. Yeah, it's the whole breakdown, bro. So I'm not saying US is right and the rest of the world is wrong. It's kind of a weird stance. No, you think. might be, no. bro. You no, might it's be. not. Football is foot and ball. How do you play football? <laughs> yeah, but the football by definition is an oval shape. It's an oval shape where soccer is a round ball. So not hand egg. Just what hand saying, egg, yeah. Hand egg. It's a you don't call you don't call a rugby ball a rugby ball. They should have called it. They should have called it like American. You know how they have like Aussie rules football, yeah. They should have called it American rules, like about about American football, and then just called this football. We'll call it F U T B O L. I know What's that American... one in? Yeah, what is that one in Australia called? It's like 
like four sports in one. It's like a, it's a, yeah, Aussie rules. Yeah, yeah, that one's crazy. Uh, the Persian Gulf is on the line. <laughs> the oh, crazy. Everything, everything's. Oh, shout out England <laughs> Wales though. That's another derby, bro. Two derbies. You've got USA. These are derbies, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah he said these are derbies, man. <laughs> these are derbies, right? It, this is bigger than your classical and all of that. Yeah. This is big. This is, this is the world's fate on the line. One, and then you've got you've also got Welsh independence on the line or something like that. I don't know, Yo Valley, whatever. Something is on the line. British, someone Wales. Best... Cornwall joins Wales. Cornwall, yeah, Cornish, the Cornish, the battle for Cornwall, whatever. Gareth Bell's <laughs> being British or Welsh, I don't know. Same thing. Oh. Eunice saying, "Hey, if you want to touch on it, by the way, guys, you see the UV news yeah, before we wrap up. Yeah, well, you seen the news." Uh, all the Juve board of directors have left the club. Um, they're saying they're in massive debt. I've, I've seen, I've seen, I know Juve are broke. I know they've been cooking up the books. I don't know how they even signed Locatelli, Vlahovic, all of that. I don't know how they were doing that. Pogba, Di Maria, I know they were freeze, but something's cooking at Juve. It looks like the Super League is well and truly dead. Obviously, we touched on it here FSG selling, Glazers selling. It looks like a lot of clubs, man. I think they had the. The fingers in the Super League pot. Yeah. Mm. Let's let's raid Juventus, man. Vlaovic, Kostic. Who else they got? Bring Paul so back. So is, is Juve up for sale? Because I might just go over there and acquire that still. It's been... Juve's a weak club. So, I think they've been run by the Agnelli Paco family. Haribos. Golden yeah, Bay. no. You can't play with the mafiosos, bro. You can't, you can't, yeah. you can't take the club from, well, from the people. No Super League, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they're in the mud. Pulling out my FSG uh, stocks early as well, man. Can't let that money go down the drain. Should it, should Yo, you're no longer back in FSG. You're like, oh no, are, no, are you gonna follow FSG? Stocks, no, no, are you gonna follow FSG after Liverpool in terms of Red Sox? Well, what's the good goal? I don't know. If they purchase another club somewhere. Are you? Are uh, AC you? Milan. Yeah, they, they their investors put something. <clears throat> their investors put something together for uh, AC Milan. Hopefully that goes through. Um, and that's what the next um investment will be, man. So I'll be, I'll be heavy this, on the AC Milan stocks. Yeah. Nice. yeah, my son is named Origi, man. It's it's mad. Yeah, oh, for the books. Might as well get a Milan top then, mate. You're nearly yeah, there. I already have a Milan top. Yeah, oh so my god, that's one. Already, that's mm-hmm. one I want. Yeah, but I really wanted a Origi and Milan top. But I don't, I don't like the kit this year. So I'm hoping next year. Puma, it's, it's still Puma, isn't it? Yeah, it's vintage Milan. You know, you know, you see a Milan kit, you're like, that's AC mm-hmm. Milan. Yeah. None of this, none of this banter era Milan, yeah. Vintage. <laughs> it's not that it's not that hard to make a Milan shirt though, is it? Like it's not red and black. Bro, it's it's not simple, hard. Man. Arsenal, they nail it. I'm not gonna lie, Arsenal are the goats at kits. All right. Yeah, yeah. Arsenal know how to do kits. AC when... Milan, Inter Milan, Barcelona, Real Madrid. You should be now Real Madrid is the easiest kit to make. You put some Adidas stripes in it, you have the all white, you have a, maybe you have a collar, maybe you have a tint of gold, perfect, beautiful. AC After Milan, Arsenal kits, I always love the Real Madrid kits. I love the Real Madrid kits. This year's Barcelona kits, the first one I looked at, like, yo, I like this one. Maybe because of Spotify. I don't know, but the design of it, I liked it. The Spotify the Barcelona kit. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I like yeah. this Barcelona kit. But, nah, yeah, nah, the kit, Arsenal kits, obviously. Adidas, they've been nice enough. By the way, Bilal, why hasn't this Saliba... Ah, bro, Saliba, stay on the bench, bro. We don't need you to play. I don't need him playing a single minute, man. You guys thought Kunate was going to get rest. No, no, no. Kunate is going to play. Saliba's coming back fresh. He's ready. Even now, like Jesus, man, they're doing little videos of him with his touch today. I'm like, oh, damn. They're seeing my boy. Let him let him rest on that bench. We don't... This is why Ghana today, man. I was happy and sad at the same time. Do you not I worry as an Arsenal back. fan? Do you not worry as an Arsenal fan that mm-hmm. all the momentum has just been sucked out due to the World Cup? It's going to feel like a new yeah. season. People said it was going to be like two yeah. seasons. It actually feels like a new season. Zuberi, I, I don't know about game. you, but I'm actually, I actually feel like when Liverpool play that first game, that first game after the World Cup, I'm like, damn, I'm going to forget about all the troubles of the first three, four months. Um, I'm, I wish I can be the same, bro, because... <laughs> Virgil coming out like Pep Lind is talking about, yeah, I run the percentage game and, and attackers now have figured out if he's running the percentage game, I'm just going to back myself to shoot and give myself a, a percentage of uh, scoring. And, and they've been coming up, man. So Virgil has found out. I don't think he's ever going to be the Virgil of the past. 
Um, the same text people put on Indeedy about being good two, three years ago is, is the same text I'm putting on Verge, bro. Verge is done out here, bro. Two, three years ago, Virgil is washed, man. He ain't going to be any better than what we had in the past, bro. We can blame it on Pickford kicking out his knee. I'm not excited. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the World Cup. One. Bro, I'm looking at the World Cup and I'm seeing some <laughs> names standing up. And I haven't seen mm. Nunes stand up. And I'm not going to be like, oh, it's because it's Uruguay. Bro, I'm not doing that Uruguay tax. Bro, Nunes needs to come back fire. And if he comes back and he's leggy for two games, bro, I'm dragging him. Tax. I'm dragging him, bro. Tax. No, is going to be back? Tax. Is Jota going to be back or not? Uh, oh, D- Diaz is definitely back. Jota is, I don't know, I think Jota is probably going to be back in January, February. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. People come back from injuries and transfer window. That's what I'm looking forward to. Like Arsenal, my guy Smith Rowe, I'm waiting for him to come back. That's my extra 10 goals a season Baller. right there. Yeah, I love him. him... Uh, I, I rate Smith Rowe, man. Big up nah, ESR. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's to be right, this, this transfer window is going to be crazy because of the World Cup. I reckon loads of signings are going to be made. Well, you have because to. it feels like a new season, doesn't it? Yeah, if yeah. This is almost like season, preseason. Yeah, 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 it'll be like almost like preseason uh, yeah. coming back after the World Cup. So it's if they can bring their um, World Cup form into their club games, and then I'm telling you, man, whoever was worth 13 mil just went up to like 29, 28 million. Who was sitting on around 25, 30? We're talking 45, 50. Whoever was on the 50 mark, you know what I'm saying? Talking big bucks. You know, a lot of teams, I don't mm. think they'd be able to afford these guys, but that's where we're at now. So far, though, how many players have really increased their value, so to speak? I don't Gakpo. think there's that many. Yeah, maybe Gakpo, but that's only because of Man United tax. Kudus, maybe. Uh, just keeping it real. Kudus, potentially, but uh, still, if Liverpool but, come in, it's not going to be that much. To be Bellingham, to Bellingham raised it by about 20 mil and then dropped it by about 10. Um, Captain America, uh, yeah, people seeing, seeing some more super serum in him. Uh, that 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 Musu guy from America as well. Yeah, yeah, you know, he, he, he's. I reckon there are a few. Um, but then you're, you're always gonna get the World Cup hype players, you know, that just will never perform. But I reckon there are still some ballers out there that will just pay off. So, yeah, big up the Copa yeah. Mundial. Yeah, cop the moon and all of that, man. Yeah, no, it's been good. But yeah, guys, I don't think we have much left to touch on. Tomorrow should be good. Um, I'm looking forward to all of these custody of, custody of, custody of games. So yeah, it's going to be good, man. I can't wait. If you guys have anything else to say, let the people know, man. No, uh, no, nah, that's it, man. People tune in again. The carnage continues. In USA versus Iran. Co- uh, Democracy is on the line, people. We'll see you this time next week. We could be entering World War Three. We could be seeing a cut of democratic ties. Or we could just be seeing nothing. I'm looking forward to the next game of football. All right, guys. I think that's about it. Peace. <laughs>